comes from. Well, Hi, horses. Zero viewers, it's not very good. It's not very many. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna wait a minute and then we'll call Cherry. Cohesion. I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong. Right, yeah, yeah, true, true. I'm watching Destiny uh debate this uh white nationalist but I keep I keep agreeing with the white nationalist so I, I feel like maybe I should debate destiny about white nationalism <clears throat> I probably don't agree with, I don't think I agree with his broader points though I, I think I just agree with a, a lot of the mini points he's making It's more it's more like I I would be much more willing to concede a lot of the points he's making. But not his conclusion. Oh. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I'm proud of this shirt. Another Shaylin masterpiece, obviously. They'll use some facts to tell whole lies right. Yeah, and I feel like um I, when I talk to the white nationalist tomorrow, I think he's a white nationalist. I think that's how he ad identifies. I don't want to, I don't want to not use his preferred pronouns, but I think he's a white nationalist. And, uh, yeah, I assume that what will happen is that I will probably concede most of his points or data or whatever, and just say like, I just reach a different conclusion at the end. Uh, Okay. Let's see if Cherry's ready to talk. Good morning. Thank you. I'm proud of my shirt. I used to feel weird wearing pictures of myself on my clothing, but now it feels totally normal. Uh, okay, that's all set up, right? All right, I think we're ready to go. I can't wait to show my girlfriend your video. She's a big lib. She's going to hate it. That does sound kind of entertaining. Um, but hopefully, a lot of I think a lot of liberals watch my videos. I hope she doesn't hate it. How are you always so nonchalant? Uh, I don't know. How's my day been? Um... It's been good. Was just watching the Destiny uh, White Nationalist debate. Uh, snuggling with the cat. 
Uh, I'm looking to get some shelves. I think I, I think the back, obviously the setup here needs a little redecorating. So I think I'm going to get some uh, floating shelves for the corner here and uh, see if Shailen will install those for me. I convinced you to go back to therapy. I'm glad to hear that. That's good. I, I'm glad you're going to take care of yourself. It's really interesting. I've never seen you have a strong emotional reaction to something. Uh, yeah, I guess that's true. I feel like I take things in stride pretty quickly. Oh, wait, Cherry's calling. Maybe she'll get me to have a strong emotional reaction. Hey. Uh oh. Hey, I'm streaming. Oh, wait, me too. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, wait, let me... Yeah. Yeah, there we go, okay. All right, I can, you know what? I'm gonna give you half the screen. I can't hear you now. No, no. This is an acoustic panel. Uh, I built three, four, five, five of them. I feel like there should be six. Well, I guess I only built five. Yeah, that's weird. Was I missing one? Uh, yeah, I built five acoustic panels and a giant bass trap so that I could record a rap album in my office and not have it sound like I recorded it in a bathroom. Wait, there's another rap album coming? Uh, yeah, eventually, but I was talking about the first one. Oh. Yeah, so these are, um, this, this thing is, it's a uh, six inch deep, uh, two foot wide, four foot tall. It's full of, uh, um, what the hell is it called? Insulation, like sound absorbing insulation. And then the bass trap is like a gigantic. Uh, I think it's four feet tall and six feet long and two feet wide. So it's just like huge thing. Um, just to make it sound better. Yeah, but it's not very pretty. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to install some uh, shelves behind me because you guys, you have a cool setup, Jerry. Like uh, all you guys have such nice, colorful. Yeah. And I feel like I'm just like sitting here in a room. In a white room. Honestly, if you stuck with like, like white walls and. I don't know, maybe put some padding on it. I think it goes <laughs> with your vibe. <laughs> yeah, straight jacket. Uh, thank you for the suggestion. I really appreciate that. No problem. I want you to succeed. Thanks. Yeah, that seems like uh, it's up in the air, whether I'm going to succeed or not. So I appreciate the help. I think you will. I hope so. It could be very well be a flash in the pan. Like I see a lot of comments like on your, 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 you know what I was thinking? We should look yeah. at each other's chats, but not our own. Wouldn't that be weird? Mm, it would be interesting. Just, yeah. I feel like I, if I look at your chat, people are just going to call me dumb. <laughs> um, that's what happened during Stardust panel. Yes, I Even thought that was extremely was... funny. You responded to eat shit. I thought that was uh, no, no, no. that was very funny. I said eat my ass. It's oh, my go-to. My... Oh, okay. Eat my ass. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, eat shit thought... is too vague. I want them to know exactly where the shit is coming from. In case there's any confusion. Yeah. Um. Yo, what is this dumb girl talking about? I don't know, guys. <laughs> Um, okay, so are we going to look at our chat or not? No chat, right? That's what you said. I don't straight. care. It's up to you. I, I suggest for people not to look at the chat. Like, yeah. just, you can re-chat if you want to, like, gauge how you feel you're doing. Or to see if people, like, have your back or not. But don't just, like, start debating chat. I'm not going to debate chat, but I'm saying, do you want okay. us to, do you want to, do you want us to shut chat out? Or do you, <laughs> my chat says this is getting weird. Do you want us to shut chat out? Or do you want to, uh. No. Or, or do we up. want to sort semi? Let them be involved. Okay, so we'll keep them semi included. Yeah, I don't. I'm not. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> I think we can include them in a way where I feel like we can trust each other not to. Um, I mean, I don't care if my chat turns against me. I, I, uh, I think I don't know. I haven't really had that happen yet. I guess we'll see what happens if it does. Yeah, we'll experiment. Um, yeah, you said you were worried for me. I've I've watched all the fucking shit you're talking. You said you're worried for me, because because you've never <laughs> seen you don't you don't know how I'm going to react to losing a debate to a girl. I think is what. You're I, well, first of all, I don't think it's not that. I'm worried about you losing a debate to me. How's okay. it going to look for you if I start crying because you tell me that uh, rape is, is like my fault? I think that would be on brand. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess we'll find scared, out. I'm not scared. <laughs> no. Or do you feel like you're going to cry if we talk about rape? No. I think I'll be okay. okay. Do you, I'm only worried. And if I do cry, I'm hormonal. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I saw your uh, announcement. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well, I'm also on my period, so we could oh, clash. No, 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 I'm I'm on my period, but also my estrogen levels are really high for like what they should be. So, like outside oh, of my period, I, I, I'm I assume mine are too. <laughs> throwing off hormones, yeah. Okay. But if I cry, it's going to be your fault, and it's because you're a monster, and it's because um, you're a danger to the internet and society at whole. Okay. I understand. Well, let's not start there. Let's start with you. Uh, you, said, you said Chauvin is probably autistic, and that's why he shouldn't have um, been convicted guilty. What was that? I don't think I said that. I think that's an unfair summary of what I said. Okay. Do you want, what I, do, what do, do you, you want, feel like you said? Well, wait, well, wait. Can we iron out a couple things first? We're, we're yeah, debating. Yeah, I've, I've consented to debate. So we are debating. But I want to okay. get a couple things straight. Are you trying to change my mind or just trying to, uh, one, or trying to discredit me to the audience and show them that my I'm stupid? Or my ideas are stupid or are you trying to um before we act buddy buddy with each other are you trying to just lay out for your own viewers like uh these are the things i'm going to push him on because i feel a responsibility to do so um i want to i want to reach you is like the goal what does that mean what would I that look like what would that look like? Um, so I believe, fuck, I don't know how to say it without getting right into it. I do you, like, do you, I but, personally think that your some of your stances are, they feel like you don't actually take a stance, and they think that that's incorrect. Okay. Like are, are, I, I feel like who, you're so close you, to being like. Are you an trying ally to get mine. me to take more of a stance, or are you just displaying to your own chat, uh, this is my problem with Mister Girl? I'm not expecting that to change. I just oh. need him to know that, and I need you guys to know that. Are you making your own positions more clear with the debate, or are you also actually trying to change mine? No, I think I'm actually just trying to change yours. Okay. I'm not talking to my chat at all for this. They already know my positions. Yeah, but I think there's some criticism of you as being too friendly with me. I personally don't care about that. Okay. Do you think that I care? I I think that yeah, but not for that not because of not because you want them to like you. I think that you're afraid that if you take a buddy buddy stance with me and then I'm saying things like, well, no doesn't always mean no. I think you feel some responsibility for co-signing that statement and the damage it could do to your own audience and so you might, while you may want to be friends and, you know, friendly colleagues and or whatever we're mm -hmm. going to be, I think you also want to be responsible. And so I think maybe pushing back against my ideas is a step towards your own responsibility. So, no, I, <laughs> I'm going to push back on you no matter what. Okay. Whether there's an audience watching or not. Yeah, I know. I'm just a but there is an audience watching. Person. That's fine. I'm just yeah, wondering if, if part of the reason is so that you are not seen as 
uh, agreeing with my ideas because you think it would be irresponsible. Okay. <laughs> I, I feel like that would be my position, like, with or without an audience. So it would just be insincere if I say that that's not a goal of mine. Like, I don't agree with you on everything. But I feel like I've already made that clear to my audience, but I'm willing to do that to your face if that satisfies people. Does that make we'll sense see. to you? Yeah, I guess we'll see. <laughs> I'll try to not be evasive because then, then no one will be satisfied. Okay, so what's the first topic, Derek Chauvin? <laughs> oh yeah, yes, you want, Derek can I Chauvin. Uh, okay, do you want to are, do you want to debate the things I have already said, or do you want me to re-clarify my position uh, with the risk with the risk that in re-clarifying it might shift slightly? If you feel I like it shifts, you can, you can call that me out. You on have it. shifted. I if, have if you've shifted, I don't. No, no, no. I'm going to shift. Care too much I'm going to hold shift to account. I'm going to shift, but not acknowledge it. That's the danger. But let's see what happens. Nope. Okay, here, here's That's my, fine. Here, here's what I was trying to say. It, it seems to me that Derek Chauvin might be autistic or uh, as a stand in for autism, there could be something wrong with him neurologically or socially that made him freeze or not really understand what he was doing or what he was supposed to do. Um, and not really connect or, or understand that people are not shouting at him just because they're um, rebellious or an angry mob, but because they're actually concerned that he's doing harm to somebody and, and killing somebody. Um, I don't think that means he should not have been convicted of murder, but I, I wasn't happy to see him go to jail. I think that um, given the prior complaints against him, uh, it was the job of the state to not let him be a police officer. The same way, like, if you had somebody who we knew was autistic and who cannot navigate complex, like, social situations and, and high pressure and, like, high intensity like that, who had a history of beating people and, um overusing force not but who was not a police officer it would be very irresponsible to hire that person and then so yeah i just feel like um uh i it's just it just makes me sad watching somebody who is clearly not cut out for the job and who there's every out, outward indication they were not cut out for the job that result in somebody's death and i again i agree that it's murder i just don't I don't know that we have an alternate solution to sending him to jail in place, but I, I really wish there was one and I'm not, I, I don't feel good seeing him go to jail. It just feels depressing. Okay. Um, there were a few more things that you added on top of like why you didn't, uh, well, I guess it all plays into part with like the police chief, like not firing him, mm -hmm. maybe his coworkers all, um, I guess not like raising their hand that he shouldn't be a cop. Like there had to be other people who knew that this person was not fit. Even 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 that day while he's kneeling on George Floyd's neck, if his um like colleagues had come over and pushed him off and been like, "Hey, what the fuck are you doing? You have to stop." I don't think he should mm -hmm. then go to jail for attempted murder. I think that that would that would have been like an a okay police interaction i think i think he probably should still be fired but it would be like yeah that's what's supposed to happen if one person is overusing force your fellow officers are supposed to come over and be like what the fuck are you doing and then you're supposed to be like oh yeah that i shouldn't be doing that and then like that that also would have been fine and then it, and then there would be no need for him to go to jail now but i just feel like i just like you... sorry go ahead okay so i see the situation and i don't see I don't jump to the thought that, oh, maybe this person's autistic because this is like a weird thing to to just do. I I see it as, oh, this was like an act of violence and you took someone's life. I'm not going to jump to autism. I'm going to probably assume um, malintent, first of all, because of kneeling for eight oh, over eight minutes. 
I think that's, that's ridiculous. That's very purposeful. Someone's I think that's crying out for their mother. You think yeah. it's preposterous to go to malintent over autism? Yeah. Kind of. Now, um, okay. So w what you do do is you find reasons of why it couldn't be his fault, why it couldn't be um, his own doing. And do you feel like while you are looking for other people's responsibility in the equation that you're actually just taking the situation and making it like no one's responsibility? Uh, well, I think it's the state's responsibility to prevent if police I... off. Okay. Because if I was to go out and do something wrong, could I then just say, if it wasn't for my parents having sex and giving birth, I would have never been here. It's not my fault. I didn't ask to be alive. You could probably say that to me. Are you're, 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 <laughs> like, don't uh, yeah, I'm not big. I'm not big on she like blaming people it. for things in general. That's the vibe I was picking up. I think, that's yeah, I'm not, like I'm just not big your... on scapegoating. And I, especially because I don't think it helps anything. Well, that is scapegoating. No, is me. I think, I think, I think sending... my own responsibility and putting it on someone else. Right. Well, yeah, but I think that this is just a complex situation with a lot of moving parts where no one particularly did anything wrong. And if um, someone did something wrong, they kneeled on someone's neck for nine minutes and took a life. Despite yeah, I, I get, calling... I get, yeah, I understand. I understand your view here, but I don't mm -hmm. think, um, when I say particularly wrong, I mean like you're implying that he wanted to kill him. Do you think he wanted to kill him? Yes. You th So you think Derek Chauvin said, like, here's my problem. If Derek Chauvin was like, okay, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to commit my first murder right now in front of uh, 20 people filming me. Because, like, fuck this. Fuck these people. You know, I'm tired of this shit. I'm going to murder somebody on camera. Um, That speaks to a different mental illness. Not autism. I don't know what the fuck it is. But it's, like, clearly super unhinged and bizarre behavior. I, I, I don't, but I don't buy it. I don't think he was trying to kill him. I think when somebody is gasping for air, asking for help, saying they can't breathe, and crying for their mom, you're making a deliberate choice right there. There's I think that's no because you've threat. never... No, no, no. I, I empathize with, like, the, the use of force to detain an individual. But they probably all fucking minutes... say that. Who, like, the, the people that are, like, in my position, judging... No, the people who get detained. Don't you think they all fucking cry for their mothers and piss themselves and say that they can't breathe? I assume that when you when you arrest people who do drugs in in crime heavy neighborhoods, I bet that is an interaction that you hear often. There's, I don't know. Okay, there's but a, it's possible, there's a right? Very big difference. I yeah. I believe that there are people who automatically say that, right? They go, "Ow, ow, this hurts, this hurts," and I think most of the time it does hurt. As someone who has been forcefully detained by a man that was like fucking five times my size okay it does hurt when they put you on the ground yeah but um i feel like to be leaning on somebody's back and then their neck for eight minutes you have no cause to believe that this person can still be a threat to you you know he doesn't have weapons you can release that's the, yeah I, i'm not saying what he did makes sense you're switching no, around except, now we're I'm, starting out with was I'm he saying, intentionally trying to murder him you say yes, I, and I say that's preposterous. I don't believe that at all. When you do not lift off, that is when when he does not get up, that yeah. is intention to me. You are I don't, I don't agree. choosing not yeah, to just, give aid is choosing to take a life in this situation. I I understand that it resulted in his death, and I do believe that he killed him. I don't think that he was intending to kill him. There's, we both know the facts of the case, right? So, like, I don't mm -hmm. think pointing mm -hmm. out... I don't think you saying, like, nine fucking minutes. Like, it's not going to mean anything to me. So, unless you have well, some... Well, it was, like, nine fucking minutes. <laughs> so, I think Mr. that Girl. unless you have some argument that about something I've said that makes you think that I I'm... am not... And it's not clicking for me that actually I do mm -hmm. believe it was intentional murder. I, I don't... I feel like we're at a dead end. I just don't think he killed him yeah, on purpose. Yeah, yeah. I... I, I think we're at a dead end on him, but I think okay. it's more indicative of um, your like anti-punishment 
position. And anti-blame. And anti-blame. Yeah. When it's... Okay. How do you make sure people don't do bad things if they are aware that there are no consequences for their actions? I think being convicted of murder, even if the punishment were minor, and fired from your, whatever, 30-year career as a police officer, uh, is a consequence. Oh, well... Well, no, those two things are punishment then. Uh, no, if you're if you're okay with I don't I don't I don't think so. I I mean no, they, they are they're, they're they're not they are punishment they are, they're, 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 to par they're, with murder, but they are a form of punishment, right? They are a form of punishment, but they're also functional. Like I, if you do something like that, you shouldn't be a police officer anymore. It's not so it's not it's not like we're doing that just to hurt you or scare you or make you feel bad. We're, we we our society has to remove you from that position of power. You've shown that you can't wield the power, and you have to go fucking do something else, like go be an electrician or whatever the fuck you want to do. You just can't do this. You can't carry a gun anymore. And so that's not punishment so much as like, uh, based on the mm-hmm. whatever seventeen claims of overuse of force against you, and now a murder. You have shown that probably for the rest of your life. You're not going to be able to be trusted with the ability to use violence in in a as like a form of authority. So like you just can't do that anymore. And then the conviction is like, I guess it is a punishment, but it's like we have to label what you did as murder. And so I agree that like, so I have this like systems perspective of like, there's so many other things that went wrong that led to the murder that I think we should all be taking responsibility for. That the state and people mm. in general and society, and I don't think it's fair to blame it all on Derek Chauvin or as conservatives tend to want to blame it on George Floyd. Like there's people in my chat saying, well, but he didn't kill him. He died of an overdose. And so there's this strong incentive to be like, it was all, all his true. fault, all George Floyd's fault. Okay, but if George Floyd hadn't, whatever, been a drug addict, or had had complied nicely with the police. Had a had, or if he had been healthier, had a fake $20 if he had if, bill, right? If he hadn't had a fake twenty dollar bill, if he hadn't been on drugs, if he hadn't been overweight, if he had complied with the police, if he hadn't had a if panic he hadn't disorder, had an it, overzealous police officer with the lack not, of respect you're, you're changing for the life. Sub, you're changing the subject. To detain him. You're changing the subject. I'm not. You're doing I'm, the I'm you're doing the exact a thing that I'm. Very difficult time inserting myself into the subject, Mr. Girl. Okay. You're doing the exact thing I'm talking about. One of you things. Wait, what's the exact exa- thing? A desire to. Look at a bunch of complex moving parts, and probably if any of them had been different, um, this wouldn't have happened. And to laser in on some of them, but not others. I think you have to acknowledge. Here's, that- no, I can I can meet you, okay? I can absolutely meet you where you want these other things to be held accountable. Yeah. I do too, but I want them to be held accountable on top of of the conviction. No, I don't. That's not what I'm saying. On top of the imprisonment. I don't but care. I don't I'm care saying. about what's held accountable. I know I you do, but you so can you're do not you're, all of it. You I don't care like, do you, about do I don't you care not about think it. that he can be convicted and then on top of that that the police chief can be um put under scrutiny and under investigation for allowing a police officer to get 17 reports or whatever and then you're changing have the subject. The department no, I'm not changing the subject. I'm Here's trying to subject. engage with what you If George you find. Floyd had not been a counterfeiter, a drug addict, or had not resisted arrest, do you do you agree he'd still be alive? So if if he wasn't in that situation, like if he wasn't if any there, of those yeah. three things had no, been different, maybe. Pro- I mean, probably. Yeah. Okay, so here's here's my critique of how people talk about this case. Liberals want to talk about Derek Chauvin and how if he hadn't knelt on his neck for nine minutes, George Floyd would still be alive. And then more moderate liberals like myself want to talk about how if the police had better training, then George Floyd would still be alive. Conservatives want to talk about how if George Floyd hadn't been a drug addict or a criminal or hadn't had this checkered past or whatever, if he hadn't been in porn, he'd still be alive. And everybody has this like part of the system. George Floyd. Oh, I didn't know this. Well, maybe this will change your stance. No, it won't stop. I know how you feel about porn. Uh, 
I actually don't. Are you anti-porn? No. Okay. Good. Uh, so all of these different th uh, moving parts, and everybody has their little section of it that they want to focus on. And so when I see someone go to jail for 11, 11 years, is that what the sentence was? Or something? Or 20 years? Some um, fucking long amount of time. Um, when I see that I happen, I, I, um, I kind of zoom out and I feel like there are so many things that could have been different and we don't need to compare them or argue about them. I, and so I don't, I don't feel like I want to take a side. I want to take a like okay. more holistic view of like, Listen. all of these things are problems and I think they all should be addressed. Like you said. Okay. And this is where we disagree, okay? Yes. Because yes. your centrist shit does not work in in real life. For advocacy. In real life, when people when people do something wrong and they do something dangerous and they take another life and they are responsible for taking that life, something has to happen. There has to be consequences. There has to be repercussions to their actions. And whether there are other people who can also be held accountable does not mean that it takes the weight off of them. It I think means so. I more think people need consequences for their aren't actions. Aren't there higher crime rates in black communities? Why are we talking about crime rates if we're having a debate about anti-punishment? Because Mr. I'm Girl. racist. You just humor me. You're not, you're not racist. <laughs> Don't ever say that to me again. You're not racist. Don't ever tell me what to do fine i guess i'm not do you agree that there are higher crime rates in black communities black people I, commit I actually, more violent crimes than white people i didn't a, like prepare a lot for this what i didn't i didn't prepare for this that's fine. Do you, would you, okay, are you willing to accept the I, hypothetical so I, I that black people commit? I what you're about to say. I understand. Do you accept the hypothetical that black people commit lots more violent crimes than white people? I'll take the hypothetical. Okay. Do you also accept the hypothetical that black people spend a lot more time in jail than white people? I'll accept the hypothetical. Okay. So that's why, from my position, I feel like policing the shit out of people and, and, and like, um, I was, Watching coverage of, I can't remember what trial it was, but someone like some um, black legal analyst was talking on CNN about how like the defendant never wants black jurors because black jurors are super crime and punishment. They always want to convict and they always want the maximum sentence. And they're always like super gung ho about like, if you break the rules, you should go to fucking jail. There, there are ways to weed out bias in juries. You know this. I know you know this. I know, but I'm saying, do you do you agree with the general sentiment that black people like sending people to jail when they break the law? I don't. I don't put black people as a monolith. And you're not willing to. I don't know that black people feel that way. Uh, okay. Well, I think they do. And I think there's irony in that. And I think there's irony in your argument because black people are over policed, they're over sentenced, and they still commit lots of crimes. And I don't think uh, violent and violent crimes, murders, lots of murders. And, and, and I don't think I don't think that sending them to jail more is going to make them do that less. And I don't think you think that I either. I think that you think that a cop, a white, an evil white know. cop, you think you think a white devil cop should be sent to jail for committing murders because and that'll somehow I heal the community. That it'll that'll, it'll, it'll teach it'll teach those they'll teach those blue eyed devils a lesson. But then when it comes I to don't. when it comes to a black person, like a a seventeen year old black gang member commits a murder because he's pressured into it or w drugs that were involved or he's like abusive parents or whatever. I don't think I'm going to see you say like, no, I'm super pro punishment. This person needs to go to jail for the rest of his life to teach all those other black teenagers a goddamn lesson. I don't think I've said any of this. No, this is all. Uh... You will tell me if you're hearing voices, right? <laughs> I'm reading between the lines. <laughs> okay. Listen, you you had a really nice one go veering off to like this side of the fork in the road, but let's go back on the path where you are anti punishment and you yes. feel uncomfortable just making anyone <laughs> be held accountable for their actions. 
I feel uncomfortable torturing How? people for a decade for a 10 minutes of their actions. How do you justify that to people who get harm done to them? And uh, in life return, sucks. you say there's nothing I, that we want to do to that person who harmed you because punishment is bad. What do you do I, 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 when I, I, citizens? I don't do have punishment the same bleeding heart. Other? I don't have the same bleeding heart response to bloodlust. So, like, if so George Floyd's bloodlust. the desire to throw Derek Chauvin in jail is largely fueled by bloodlust. So, when somebody kills your your friend or family member or son or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then the family says, oh, we just want justice. And you're like, oh, what justice do you want? You're like, we just want you to throw this guy in a cage for 20 years where he might get raped. It'll just make us feel so much better. I'm like, I don't, I just don't, that okay. doesn't resonate. That doesn't resonate with me. I'm like, Listen, I think that's, I think that's insane. I'm, if you want money, I th how much, that, how much money do they get? They got a huge fucking payout. They got millions of dollars. And I think that's good. The state failed. The state killed your family member. And then they gave you a fuck ton of money. I'm, I'm for that. So but if the I, prison system was better, you're fine with punishment. I w if we if had the prison something system... similar to the Netherlands, where we had a prison system that um, addressed mental health issues, provided schooling, clean place to sleep, and a healthy diet, and helped um, prepare people for life outside of prison, rather than what we have today, which is to further ostracize people from society, yeah, yeah, yeah. dehumanize them. Yes, yes. That, Sister. I can be on board with that. Yes. But it can't be I can't meet you anywhere. But when yeah, you I don't talk even like you this. can't you can't even you can't even meet me here because I, I I'm not even okay with sending Derek Chauvin to that place for ten years. Oh be you know why? Why? I think I said this in my video. Like, do you think that if Derek Chauvin became uh what's a different job that's like pays as well as a cop, but is an electrician because that is still kind of risky. Say he became a plumber. Mm -hmm. working for the city and so he goes into municipal buildings at night and fixes the plumbing do you think that he would uh kill anybody else is that the sense you get from him that like everybody's got to watch your necks when Derek the plumber comes around because he's going to kneel on him and kill you I don't want to you, I know you don't want to. but I, I don't want to paint too. a picture of somebody, but if I can give you a hypothetical, right? Okay. Something that I learned no, in school. I don't know. Um, I want you to answer this question. No? No. No, thanks. I want you to answer this question. Do you think Derek think Chauvin would kill, would kill again. again? I think he would eventually end up um, assaulting or killing somebody, yes. I don't. I guess that's why we disagree here, but I don't think he would. I think the I think problem that I think somebody that, I who demonstrates this level of aggression and lack of care for another individual's life or lack of respect for another individual, which well, I think seventeen incidences incidents um as a cop demonstrates. Seventeen complaints, seventeen. I think complaints, the choice yes. in becoming I think the choice in becoming a cop is also follows down the line of somebody who wants uh, power. Somebody who wants over power to beat people up. Sure. But do we agree? And just because he takes a job as a plumber doesn't mean that that Absolutely. desire for I, power I, I completely, and that I, yes. lack of respect doesn't I, doesn't then turn into domestic abuse, doesn't then turn okay. into violence against their child. I see. Uh, I see what I, I, yeah, I get. I get what you're saying. What He's going to have other people he has power over who he can hurt. But but do we agree that as a police officer he was trained to pin people to the ground with his knee? No. Do we agree that he was trained to pin people to the ground as a police officer and that that is part of his job? Yes, not the way that he did it, though. It was specifically taught not to do. Uh, I, my understanding was that he was taught to do that, but only for only with a, a time restriction. But either no. way, either. Well, yes, but either way. That, I, I may be misremembering and maybe you are, too. Let's just mm -hmm. say he was yeah. he was he was trained to pin people to the ground. We agree on that, right? Not to kneel on their neck, no. Do we agree that he was trained to pin people to the Not ground? Not to kneel on their upper back, no. Do you agree that he was trained to pin people to the ground? I think that that's part of training. <laughs> I think so, too. Every cop does it. If they if it's not part of training, then I don't know where they're all getting mm -hmm. it from. It's a hell of a coincidence. Okay, so his job is to restrain people, pin them to the ground, handcuff them, 
throw them around, tase them, shoot them if necessary, beat them with sticks. Like, those are all in his job description. Mm -hmm. And I am not aware of any criminal history or even criminal charges against him doing things like that when he was not working. But uh, there might be, but I'm not aware of them. So from my point of view, and I'm not trying to sway you, sway you to it, I'm just trying to show you where I'm at. From my point of view, I see a guy who was doing what he was trained to do just for too long, uh, too harshly, not in exactly the right way, and to... Uh, and ignoring to, all clear signs calling well, for Well, that's help. where my autism theory and comes aid. in. But yeah, ignoring... ignoring signs that Listen, what he's doing is wrong. I feel like hey, you haven't let me, been let me, let me, on let me this just... platform long enough to realize that you should not just grant people the ability to hide behind uh, they might be autistic. Okay? <laughs> let me finish and then you can give me an autism lecture. I will. Uh, so from my point of view, he did what he was trained to do or supposed to do. And I don't even necessarily agree with the, the training, but he did his job. He just did it too brutally and it, and it resulted in somebody dying. I think we should grant him the benefit of the doubt that that's what happened rather than say once a killer, always a killer and say now he has to go be locked up for 10 years just in case he actually has a propensity to kneel on people's necks. And he might have just been doing that anyway. We don't know. Uh, I, and also as a cop, like no one, I, no one else could have knelt on George Floyd's neck in broad daylight for nine minutes and not been stopped. It had to be a cop. Only a cop can get away it with that. It happened before. Yes. Only a cop can get away with exactly. that. Exactly. And so that, here. so again, that's, that goes for my argument of like, even if he's the kind of person who, if he were a cop, he would kill people. If we just make him not a cop to me, I'm like, okay, problem solved. So but do I don't... you understand that it was even a, a movement in our history that the KKK would infiltrate to, like, have their members become cops to be able to legally kill people? Great. Then we just have to fire those people. I don't. It's just, do okay, fire those if, people? if I uh, say I really want to be a cop so I can kill and black hold people. Hold on, hold on. But, but we're, we're also past the point of firing those people. Those people have been in the system, okay? Whatever. They, every You're time we get a new you... cop. No, you're no, changing, no, do, you're changing do not, the subject. whatever, just let me finish, just let me finish, just let me finish, okay? When you get a new cop, they ride along with a veteran cop, and then they learn the same fucking, um, the, the, the ticks and, and the, the, the cues that that veteran cop does, right? So the same thing that that veteran cop views as suspicious, the new cop learns that, picks up on that. Do you think that they are not, th that they haven't learned subconsciously some racist stereotypes in policing. I, they, maybe they have, but I don't see what that has to do with whether we should throw Derek Chauvin in jail for 10 years or whether he just should be fired. I don't think we should throw people in You're... jail for being racist. No, not for being racist. I'm. So then it doesn't matter if he has okay. racist stereotypes. I don't care if he I, killed George Floyd because he's black. I feel like we veered I care, off I, and then you brought us back onto the, the Chauvin thing and it's it's okay. Just take take me where you want me to go, Mr. Girl. Thank you. Jesus. Okay, so where I want to go is, to me, if if we have members of... This is why I'm against like Sting Operate, like EDP. You know? Would, I don't, I, I, I'm against that. I'm against tricking people into committing crimes that we don't know they have otherwise committed or would have what committed are you for are what are you for who do you hold accountable for anything ever hold accountable has multiple meanings so and in, in terms of bloodlust of like i how do I, you stop people from killing people okay if nobody should be um responsible for anything right and <laughs> i'm not saying that let anything. me answer your question what is stop, stop changing the question Bezos from shooting the next person who just talks about starting a union because he feels his business is at, like threatened. What do you do for that? I don't think that 100% crime prevention. Maybe he's autistic. I don't think 100% crime prevention is a good goal. It's too much. We have to okay, let some people. We, ha we, we have to let we have to, to, to well to have a certain amount of freedom. We have to let people shoot each other, or run each other over, push each other off cliffs, or whatever. You can you could 100% prevent those things, but then you'd be giving up a lot of freedom, right? Like if you had a drone 
that followed each person around and like and whenever you start to get angry or animated it just like lock like puts a rope around you we could do that and it would or we could we could build cars that won't go over the speed limit but i think we all decided like it's worth it to have the freedom Mm -hmm. there's a balance exactly so i i don't agree with the premise that i want to 100 percent prevent crimes i think once you've shown that you can't be a police officer without doing something fucking insane, like kneeling on someone's neck for nine minutes while they are dying in front of you, then you shouldn't be a police officer anymore. So to me, that is preventing future murders. I don't think throwing him in jail for 10 years and letting him out, I, I, that might make him more likely to kill people. I, have no, I don't know what effect that has on people. Get, from what I know, people who go to jail tend to commit more crimes. So I don't- You I don't, don't have I'll, a very healthy prison system. No, but so given the prison system we have, well, the, my my video saying that the Sharon the Chauvin verdict depresses me is about the current prison system that we have. But even if we had a better Swedish whatever uh, 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 white people utopia country you're talking about <laughs> country, I I don't I don't think that we need to send him there for ten years. I think that if the problem is when this guy has a badge, a gun. And like, uh, you know, wants to get out there and stop crimes. He actually just ends up beating people and murdering them. Then just give him a fucking different job. Label him a murderer. That's fine. Uh, make him do community service. That's fine, too. And let, let me ask you. Yeah. Um, this this new job that he's supposed to get. Who's supposed to want to hire him? Uh, probably not that many people are going to want to hire him. So would well, you say oh no, either right wingers, some some world, conservative, somebody will hire him. But if he doesn't get hired, then fine. He can go on fucking welfare. He can what? Go on welfare or, or social security, or I'm sure I don't know. Get his pension from being a cop, whatever. Like if you kill somebody in front of the entire world, I, I agree, it's going to be hard for you to get a job, and like that, I that I think that's an okay consequence of your actions i do believe in some kind of forgiveness and that i think it's can't... fine if if walmart wants to hire him to work in the stock room that's fine Whatever. someone who can't get a job after being shown as a murderer and not having to do anything afterwards what do you think that person's gonna do to get by the whole world thinks that they're a murderer nobody wants to hire them they saw that he just killed someone last month I mean, Derek Chauvin could probably do? just get like a book deal and go on a speaking tour. I don't think it's a good example because so he's a celebrity. So they become a celebrity. Whatever the fuck and he you wants want to do. To, you want I don't care what he to does. Celebrate that. Okay, but we're talking about what what you think would um, be effective here. And what I think you, would be effective. Like, yeah. So to me, what's effective is not is to torturing. S- that society would celebrate a murderer. <laughs> or a manslaughter. I don't fucking care. If, I don't fucking care if they celebrate him. My point, and, and think, it, with regards to answering your question, all I care about is don't torture people unnecessarily. And to me, Derek Chauvin is not somebody, he's not, he's not Charles Manson. Okay. He's not somebody who needs to be removed from society or he's going to kill again. I just don't believe that. And then the autism thing well, is why like, do you have so uh, much faith uh, in he just him? seems autistic. I don't, it's, it's, it's not so, it's not, it's not incident, so much. Wouldn't you think that he's more likely than not likely? No. Because those are all incidents as a cop. We're telling him to beat and restrain and shoot people. That's his fucking job. When somebody, so, when somebody who wants power is removed from a position of power, do you think that that lust for power is removed? I don't think we can put people in jail for having a lust for power. This is why I'm against sting operations. No, but people so who somebody, have power somebody, and abuse it. Did you see my tweet where somebody another person's life with that up with that power? Just please, just engage with this one, okay? They're in a position of power. They abuse that power and take someone's life for it. Then you remove them from that position of power. Do you think that that lust from power is gone? That no. the ability to have Not that power, all. the ability to be recognized no, for that I don't power think the lust is for power. gone. I don't, that lust yes. is still fucking there. And Correct. they're probably more desperate than they were before because they don't have the the uniform, the badge to support that for anyone else to view them with that power. Possibly. Do you think that he would then back down and become less, less needy for people to acknowledge or or yield to to his 
viewed authority. I see that there is a risk of what you're saying, and I agree that you have a point, but I don't think that is a justification for putting oh my someone God. in jail. You agree? I have a point. That's that's all I need. I can fix you. And it's going to take more than just this conversation, but I can fix you. I think so, you. too. <laughs> Do you want to move on to consent? Uh, I want to say... Uh, I, I'm, I'm anti-entrapment. And this kind of falls into that. So did you see my tweet where somebody emailed me saying, um, I didn't. They, they said, hey, I'm really nervous to email you, but I really like your music. I'm a musician. Um, is there anywhere I can buy your album? Uh, and then assigned it like Emily or something. You can download YouTube videos. like. Well, as soon as I saw the email, I thought, okay, this is Mama Max or one of those predator hunters pretending to be mm, okay. a, a teenage girl. So I said, yeah, you can, but just in case I'm like, you know, 15 bucks, 15 bucks. So I said, uh, yeah, here's oh, where okay. you can, here's where you can buy my album. Oh, I didn't know you sold it. My bad. No, don't download. Yeah. YouTube yeah. Yeah. You also, what that. the fuck's your problem? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't download a car. <laughs> so I hey, responded. I'm supportive. I resp I'm supportive. Don't worry. Thanks. Look, see, I got my mug. Oh, I didn't know that went to you. I think I've only sold. I mean, no, it didn't. I think I've only sold three or four of those. So now I know your address. My husband has guns. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now I know your husband's address, too. Um... Uh, gosh, <laughs> okay, we got okay. so sidetracked. Yeah, we did. Oh yeah, yeah. So I replied, <laughs> "Here's where you." Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said, "So here's where you can buy it," and they responded, um, "Okay, thank you so much for responding. As soon as I get my next allowance, I'm gonna buy it." And then I I just tweeted out the screenshots and said hashtag Men Writing Women. Cause it's just so like obviously fake, but I, this has happened to me a couple times. Another time, um, somebody tried to get me to solicit child porn from them. They were like, they were like, wrote me this. Uh, so I get a lot of emails from pedophiles. I wonder why Mr. Girl. Well, cause they know that I am not going to try to throw them into a wood chipper. One um, of us, one of us. No, I'm just kidding. I know. I know. you're not. I'm so okay. I'm sorry. I'm uh, but too... but even if I was, it would be fine. So, uh, yeah, they'll email me and offer to do interviews or uh, connect me with interviews because and and also because I've talked about how I'm working on like a big pedophilia project, so I have like some pedophile interviews coming up. Can you also can you not call it big pedophilia project? That's probably does not fucking help your situation. You understand that, right? My situation's fine. Okay. I'm fine with my situation. I do. Do you see me as needing or wanting help? I don't feel like I need help. Um, no, I don't think you need help. Okay, you're going to surpass anything I do on the internet, uh, <clears throat> because I'm not willing to <laughs> pretend to be all the terrible things I think you're pretending to be. I don't think I'm pretending to be anything. You think I'm pretending? I, I'm just um, I'm just willing to be labeled as them. I don't think I'm pretending to be them, though. Okay. I do take you for for sincere on the issues that you care about. Yeah. I don't take your anti punishment seriously, though. You think I'm lying? And I don't take your and and your consent. I don't. You've you've got to be like misguided or just um, blindsided. Do you know or, about the um, Attica prison riot? Attica prison riot. No. So, uh, the prisoners were subject to horrible conditions and torture, and eventually they revolted. And uh, there was this protracted standoff with the New York State Police, and they ended up firing, I think, 5,000 rounds into a crowd of prisoners. But one of the people who started the riot, who I think was involved in the Black Panthers, uh, or I guess I know was, but I don't have any uh, total proof of this, was... Uh, my cousin, who I've never met, um, but he married my 
other cousin, and I have uh, half black, half Jewish cousins who um, are, are soup. I mean, after that, are uh, he got? Uh, I think he got shot like with um, shotgun pellets. He got shot like thirty with thirty different projectiles or something like that. Um, and yeah, so there's a very s strong. Uh, even though I've, I I never met him, and he died a few years ago. Um, my interaction, and I interviewed my cousin uh, Imani on my channel a few months ago. Or, shit, I guess so. No, it was longer than a few months ago. Man, it might have been like a year or two ago now. Um... There's a very strong anti-jail sentiment in my family that I, I think I internalized. You you went to jail or prison, right? And I Oh, yeah, and I've been to jail. That's true. That's, that also makes it a little more personally, uh, personal. Yeah, I went to jail mm -hmm. for one day, and and I had the oh, threat of a... a yeah, yeah, I was just in jail overnight, but I had the threat of a year and a half sentence uh, hanging over me for like mm -hmm. three months. Um, so my okay. anti-jail feelings might be more, you might think I'm just fucking around, but I, that's not how it feels to me. I don't think, I don't think you're fucking around. And I, I feel like maybe because I take the, and I'm sorry to put it this way, but I take like the realistic position, which is that people need to know that there are consequences for their actions and we need to have a place to be able to put dangerous people in society. Um, while I and do I, understand that, like, we need a better system, um, I'm not somebody who is not, like, removed from the system. I've, I'm somebody who went through the better part of the system, mm -hmm. uh, which is um, what everyone advocates for, which is, hey, less people should be put in prison and more people should have their mental health issues addressed. Um, and there should be more, like, mental health facilities. And that's where people should go. And I had a longer stay at a mental health facility, which I would consider cruel and fucking unusual. Um, but that is not to say that they aren't utterly necessary. For what? They need to be more humane uh, for a, a psychotic episode. How long ago? How long ago is 2012? Have you had any since then? Psychotic episodes? Yeah. No. It was drug induced for a suicide attempt. So I understand so that the system on the animals. inside is not pretty. Yes. Um not pretty inside but to go in there and pretend like there aren't people who need to be in there is um just unrealistic it's untrue i i don't think i'm saying I nobody didn't belong should... in there i didn't belong <laughs> yeah everybody in there. thinks they there don't was... belong in there i'm not well, saying nobody I should be in there. Didn't belong in there i'm not saying nobody should be in there i just don't think derek chauvin's no. one of them no, you're saying nobody should be in there. No, I'm saying Derek you're Chauvin saying shouldn't be in anti -prison, there. Anti-prison. I'm, you, I'm anti. I, I, I'm anti-prison, anti-punishment. You are saying that no one should be in there. I think that prison should be a reformative place, and that people should go there for a much shorter time and should receive psychological treatment. And if they cannot be treated, I do agree they should be removed from society permanently, but not in a way that is horrible. It's, we should make it as nice as possible. Separately from my prison, separately from my prison reform ideas, given our current system, I also don't think Derek Chauvin should have gone to prison for 10 plus years. I think that's wrong. Because based on what I saw, I don't think that he is a, I, I, I don't think that he is, um, I just think he should be removed from power, and I don't think he's going to kill people uh, if he doesn't go to jail. And I don't think sending him to jail will make him not kill people anyway. I think we 
we view people in just different ways. I don't know. You're you're a give all of the benefit of the doubt. Yes. Um, and I'm more so. I see all of the the warning signs, all, and I see the actions that resulted from them, and I'm less inclined to give or grant that benefit of the yeah. Of the doubt. So even with EDP, if somebody is starts texting me dirty stuff. And mm-hmm. ropes me into like a sexual conversation with them. Uh, and the person is 30. And so like by the time you're 30, you're pretty good at having like sexual conversations with people. Most people are, I think. And then they tell me no. that they're, they tell me that they're 13. It like causes dissonance where I'm like, you're not, you're not talking like a 13 year old. It's like the shit you're saying is turning me on. And then I'm supposed to be retroactively uninterested because you're, you said you're 13 like just because I, just because I know it's illegal now I, I'm supposed to not enjoy the conversation we're having anymore and like it could be that if an actual 13 year old texted me I wouldn't be interested because maybe 13 year olds just aren't mature enough or sexually interesting enough to me like legitimately not interesting enough for for, to, for me to want to go try to meet one but a 30 year old pretending to be 13 maybe they maybe they are interesting to me and then, so then I'm like, well, I guess I do want to meet this 13 year old. And then I go meet them and it's like, no, I was a 30 year old and now you're going to jail. I think that's wrong. I don't think, I don't think we should talk people into trying to commit a crime with like fake factors that wouldn't even be there if the crime were real and then put them in jail. I think it's wrong. Okay. I have, I don't know much about this. I haven't explored ED, EDP. Right, entrapment is what you're talking five. about. Yeah, I know there's a lot of issues with it. Um, that I listen, I haven't. I finished my CJ degree a long fucking time ago. Okay, thirty two. Um, I do vaguely remember there are issues with it already. So to to say like it's it's great and it's wonderful would just be like bullshit. Um, but I don't recall exactly like the the few cases that I know that we learned about. Yeah. But I would also say, what the fuck is your sexting game? Because there's nobody, okay? Oh. I, I feel like besides the the occasional oh. My uh, video game is crazy. of like, like I could get I could get I could get somebody to Who meet to agree to meet up with said. a ten year old with my shit. It would stop, <laughs> stop. Okay. But um, no words. What the fuck do words? Words don't do anything for you on the internet. Are you kidding? Sexting is all about the visual. Um, nice lighting. What do you, what are you doing interesting with your tits this time or something like that? Like, how <laughs> long are you ejaculating? Yeah. Like, can you reach past the goalposts or something like besides like the actual yeah. videos or the photographs? Like, yeah. who cares about your words? Uh, are you writing novels? Yeah. I mean, maybe I'm old school, but, um, well, I started sexting. I mean, we're the same age, right? Wait, how old I'm are you? I'm 32. We're, we're oh, similar. You're, thir- you're 32. I'm 36. Mm-hmm. Man, I, I, I miss being 32. Uh, Very nice. I, I just turned 32. Oh, congratulations. When Thank I was... I, I started sexting when I was 10. In uh, AOL chat rooms. In 1995, the internet was like the Wild West. So mm-hmm. I was you sexting... I started me. sexting with adults when I was 10. AOL. What about MSN? Those were the better chat rooms. I didn't go to those. Mm. Okay. Well, this leads into consent, our next topic, right? Yep. Okay, so we've reached no conclusions and neither of us have changed our minds about anything so far. No, we agree that um, I can fix you in regards to anti-punishment. I already knew that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, consent. consent. Yeah. You've you've said a few yikesy things. Just a few. Um, I'm not going to try to remember your exact language, so I will let you rephrase or tell me the current take. Because maybe you've had conversations with people. Maybe like even Destiny no. or Bookfucker oh, no. have moved you. Oh, they God. haven't influenced you. 
No. I feel like Destiny hit something for you when he said the the verbal no outweighs any um, any hint of a yes that you think that you're seeing in somebody's expression. Mm. Would you would you uh, not uh, agree with that? No, no, I agree with that for the purpose of okay. giving advice to a general audience. <clears throat> Like, here's the problem, is that my videos about consent and my whole channel is like, it's it's like, okay, you already know the general mainstream consent culture party line on consent, right? So you already know that shit. I'm here to add a more nuanced layer on top of that. I'm not, I... I'm like, so if some, if so, if, I, if I'm giving to a, if I, if I get invited to a middle school, to a sex ed class to You're talk about. You're not getting invited to a middle school. If if and when I get invited to a middle school, <laughs> to never. Give, okay. To give a consent talk to a, a bunch of fourteen year olds, I'm not going to say, "Hey, listen, consent's complicated. We're all full of mixed feelings. Even when you're getting raped, part of you probably still wants it, and like you got to fucking." try to untwist that shit in therapy for years and none of us can do that in real time so it's all a fucking mess and if somebody says no to you they might mean yes so you got to look in their eyes and see like what's going on in there you got to connect and use that connection to make a decision like i'm not going to say that i'm going to say the same boring shit that everybody says because 14 year olds are not ready to hear or or they don't most of them don't have the kind of baseline foundational education so all the boring stuff I agree with in broad strokes, but then in in reality, there's a lot of gray area. And so what I'm doing is I'm not I'm not trying to give advice on how to approach sexual situations. This is more advice on how to understand them, how to understand why, even if you followed all of the, the normal consent culture rules, why you might still feel raped or might feel like you raped someone and why. Even if you broke some of the consent culture rules, like somebody said no, but then signaled yes and you did it anyway, why that person might not feel that you raped them and why you might not feel that you did anything wrong. And so it's about diving into the gray areas that are more confusing that other people don't talk about as much. I want to talk about the thing that you sneak into the gray area, which is this idea <laughs> that... Um, no doesn't always mean no. Correct. And this idea that, say, yeah. um, I don't know, you oh, you almost phrase it like you have to, to solve a mystery or something like that. Like you can't just ask for clarification. Or do you feel like it's unsexy for you to yes. stop and it's just unsexy make for, sure? You know, you know, it is unsexy to stop and make sure. That is definitionally no, that's unsexy. that's the hottest fucking thing. I will, listen having someone understand exactly what I want and exactly what I'm cool with is the sexiest thing. You know I, what I think is hotter be fucking free. I can be relaxed for the entire time. <clears throat> I don't have to worry that you know somebody is going to jam their dick in the wrong direction in my vagina. You know, some people have crooked dicks. They need to be told what to do. Okay. Okay. Those you're people not, need directions. You're twisting the point around here a little bit. I'm not. I'm trying twisting to create a little bit of lightheartedness. You're twisting. For some people, no, okay? no, no, no. You're, here's what you're doing. What am I doing? In my example, I'm talking about someone correctly intuiting what you actually want without you telling them. And then Why? you said, Do you need to play a mime game. I'm not saying uh, I need you to. I, you're changing the subject. Oh, you're already person. changing the subject. Wow. Wow. What you were saying is that it's sexy for someone to need clarification. And I submit to you that it is actually sexier for someone to no, no, no. know what you actually want, even if you have exactly. not told them. No, no, no. The sexy part is for someone to know exactly what you want. And they this... cannot know that unless you tell them. Unless I don't think they that's true. Unless they care enough to fucking ask. I don't yes. think that's true. I think you can tell what somebody that wants without true. asking them. I don't think you can. I, I, it's a, it's a, I it's think a, it's... you risk... You risk violating somebody. You yes, risk absolutely. assaulting somebody. That's why I and said it's an advanced. It's an advanced. I want anybody to take. It's an advanced maneuver. Do you acknowledge that in that advanced maneuver that it's? I literally possible? just acknowledge this. You are risking then raping somebody. Then why would somebody. you want when that? You... Then why would you want that? 
Why because, is that still Okay, sexy? do we agree that rape is not a strict binary? That there's like semi-rape and kind of rape and then actual rape and then super rape and there's, then like at the top there's I'm like uh, there's there's, there's rape, ultra, ultra there's, rape. There's there rape, are different de- there's sexual assault, you can have sexual aggression. I ain't talking about there's fucking legal I'm, I'm not, not talking talk about, about legal terminology. I'm saying I'm, I'm saying do you as a human do we agree? I do not want to rank severity of rape. I know you don't want to. That's why I'm asking you to. Okay. If you're not going to, do you see why do you understand how somebody could? The my problem with your argument is you're like you're like, if you grab your girlfriend's butt without asking her if you can, you risk sexually assaulting her. And it's like, that's not the same as grabbing somebody's ass in a subway station yes, that we've obviously. never met before. Great. So there, yes, so even, okay. so if I grab Shaylin's ass and she doesn't want me to, I have sexually assaulted her legally. Mm-hmm. No one would ever prosecute that. Uh, unless we had like been separated or like not speaking for a long period of time. If 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 the if the cops were like, wait, so did he grab your ass often? And she's like, yeah, usually I like it, but today I wasn't in the mood. They're not going to arrest me. They're going to say, well, sounds like yes, you guys. I agree. Need- you're giving me you're giving me the easiest fucking. Great. Oh, so we agree. Example for your but point. you just said you weren't going to rank you weren't going to rank sex crimes, and because now you that's are. That's not where I thought we were going. I didn't know we were just like talking. We weren't about going just there. Rapping, I'm okay? saying that we. we I'm saying. Rape. I'm saying okay, if if um. Shaylin and I are naked and uh, she's on top of me, like in my Tinder story. Uh, and let's say, let's say she doesn't say I'm not ready, but let's say it's a, a part, it's a, let's, let's stop using Shaylin as an example. Cause it's weird. Let's say that you, you fuck your partner without warning. And then they say, Hey, I actually don't, I don't want to do this right now. And then you stop. Do we agree? That's much less serious than if you do that to somebody who've never had sex with before and who you don't know. Like, um, yeah, I, I don't I don't think. I, OK, if you're not willing to rank rapes as worse or less severe then I don't think we're going yes to get I don't I don't think I know. But as a general idea, like in order to understand where I'm coming from, to answer your question, you said, why is it worth taking risks? And my answer is like, because it's not that big of a risk. I the think worst, it's a the worst, huge risk. It's not when you, the worst. When you the, tell your Tinder date story, that was a that was a rape story. Yeah. That was a rape story. I don't think so. I'm telling it because it's a it's a stupid example of something to call rape. I'm deconstructing the idea of what example. rape is. It's a terrible example. If if somebody told me that story and was like, if someone said, I got like Max, I need I need to talk to you. I got raped last night. I'm like, what happened? And they told me that story. I would be like, um, I, I would talk to them about their feelings, but I wouldn't be like. It's, I would have not not even close to the same reaction as if there were like someone pulled a gun on me in a parking lot and then forced themselves into me. It's completely different. I don't I don't think it's different. I think to you it feels different because you don't think it's I different. Think you get, I don't Stop think it's it. different. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You're saying that you have the same emotional response to hearing that Tinder story as as if I you, you're saying that if if I made a video where I'm like, listen, Wait, consent's con- out. What did you say? I said they're different. I said it's different. Di- OK, the, the Tinder story compared to what story? I'm sorry. It's very possible that he's raping somebody out. in a parking lot with a gun. Oh, OK. Well, yeah. There, you say, so you said it's you said it's a, you, well, yeah, you said it's a rape story. But it's like the mildest rape you've ever heard of. If I told you, even without a gun, if I said, listen, consent's complicated. For example, one time I chased a woman across a empty field. I pinned her down, ripped her clothes off, and then ravaged her until I was satisfied and then left her there to crawl home. You, we would not be having this conversation right now. All of the people hearing it no, would, would immediately report is, me to the police. You do, like okay, so. Okay, so we under we like, agree. We agree that you're explaining the rapes that are easy for people to understand. 
I okay. just want you to what admit that when you most... said they're the same, that's not true. You don't actually think no. that. I don't think they're the same, but I also... One is much more severe. I don't know why I said yes, because I don't feel like I heard, like... That's fine. The example you said. That's fine. Um, I just want... I just want us to, we have to agree going forward in this conversation that whether the Tinder story is rape or not, if it is, it is a very mild rape. And the okay, idea that there I'm, is a, the idea that there can be such a thing call as, it a, mild, I will call it I know. less severe. Than <laughs> okay. Being so I guess, so then I think that gets to our central disagreement is that I think there is such a thing as a mild rape and to, to risk mildly raping somebody is a milder risk. It is a risk. You can be in trouble for it. You can get uh, socially mm -hmm. ostracized or you could go to jail for it. Uh, and you could hurt somebody. You could traumatize somebody. Those are all still risks. But the more you know somebody and the closer a connection you have with them and the better your sense of what's going on with them is, the less of a risk there is. And I, the trade-off... I agree. The trade-off is that it is, it is okay. sexier. Listen, this, you understand the sexy part about learning your partner, like being with your partner for a while and understanding what they like. Consent and is not, not having sexy. to ask permission is because you've learned that person. I don't agree. Risk is sexy. That's why people take it's risks. Not, That's why people jump out of it planes. It is not sexy. That's not is true. Not sexy. This is what and I hate about consent culture. Much... This is what I hate about consent culture is they're like they're like kids. You know what you know what people really fantasize about that's really sexy? Having a long protracted conversation about exactly what you're comfortable with every 5 seconds and you and putting a big rubber bag over your dick. That's so okay, sexy. Listen. All so sexy. And it's like no, it's not. We I think that we would get much further with young people if we acknowledge that it's not sexy, but that it's safer. You're trading sexiness I, for safety. There are people that it's very clear when, like, when what they've done is wrong and it's rape. And do you think I'm a, a rapist? girlfriend might no, listen, listen to me. Do you there, think are, I'm a there are people who it's very fucking clear. I think that you are very comfortable with taking risks with other people's bodies. And that's terrifying to me. <laughs> I think there is. Listen, it's, yeah. it's not. Do you think I'm my a husband already said I can't fuck you? So it's it's not do you like have an open I'm relationship right of that. I do. You are the first veto that we've encountered really yes so okay after i was uh, in shaylin if shaylin's watching this shaylin i love you but i have to ask more about this line of questioning uh <laughs> i i only have eyes for you and we're in a monogamous relationship but why what happened what did he say what did he say um, yeah he heard your tinder story and he does not like the idea of me being with a guy who might <laughs> violate me in that way. So he thinks I'm a rapist. Um, I would ask him, but at the very least, he thinks that you're somebody who wouldn't take to cues and probably wouldn't take the verbal. I'm a real Derek over. Chauvin in bed. Sexually Listen, autistic. The, I'm not letting you use autism as a fucking shield here, okay? You're not <laughs> autistic. No, I'm very Fuck socially adept. <laughs> I probably didn't date for a very long time after an abusive relationship, feeling that there were people... Like you, that would just do what they wanted. And I was yeah. at a point where I didn't want people to just do what they want with me anymore. And it took a very long time to find a guy who was willing to just, like, listen and understand what I wanted. And 
I'm. <laughs> but now he's vetoing people. Sounds like you found another control freak. It sounds like I found someone who does not <laughs> want me to get raped again. Can I ask you a question? No, I'm going to finish. Okay. I don't believe that your goal is to go out raping people, okay? Okay. But I want you to understand that the message that you sent out, that the message that you're saying that consent and asking for consent is not sexy, it's alarming. It's alarming. And for most women who have been in my position, who have been with men who have chosen for them what they wanted and maybe you walk away um keep your head up high or maybe you say no in the moment and you get slapped or maybe you return and try to get some power back over them and show them that whatever you did it didn't fucking break me and i'm gonna stick with you Whatever fucking outcome that they chose to do to cope with someone telling them what they wanted because they saw it in their eyes. Um, that scares the fuck out of women like me. You're sending that message to a lot of people on this platform. It's a very scary message. Um, yeah, I can see why that's scary to you. You think that you think most rapes occur when the rapist thinks that the victim wants it and cannot be convinced otherwise? I think the one in which you're talking about, that whole it's sexier if I don't ask and I can kind of gauge what she wants, I think that's pretty fucking common. Uh, yeah. Okay. Do you think that in my case that I was wrong? I think you were. Do you, uh, what are you basing that on? On you saying that she said no and you inserted anyway. Yeah. Well, okay. When I said that I was wrong, I'm saying, do you think that I was wrong to guess that that's what she wanted me to do? Yes. Do why do you think that? Because I think if she says no, that that's the only thing that matters. That's a different question from what I'm asking. I'm not asking if what I did was right. What I'm asking is, do you think that my... I assume your stance is, even if she is secretly wishing for me to push her down onto me, and even if she is intentionally signaling to me with her eyes that that is what she wants me to do, the fact that she told me not to should supersede that, and so it is not right for me to do that, even if that's what she wants. Correct. Okay. Can we set that aside for a second and answer my new question, okay. which is, do you think that that is what she wanted me to do? I can't possibly know what she wanted. Do you think it's possible that that's what she wanted me to do? To fuck her. After yeah. she said no. Yes. Like, do you, do, you, do you agree that sometimes people send mixed messages about what they want? They will say no to something, but uh, secretly be wishing for it to happen anyway. And you can say it's irresponsible to do that or that they that the other person, it's the onus is on them to say like, well, hey, I'm getting confused. What's going on here? I understand you believe that. But do you agree I that it... I am inclined you, to believe that a naked woman on top of you... Yeah who feels like she's already that close to getting penetrated, for her to utter no is probably um, weighs more to me than anything else. That's so fine. We no. already established that. Can you set that aside and answer my no, new question? But Can you set that aside and no, answer it, my new question? Okay, it's your zone. So now we're, now we're, now we're your, having a new... Does your new question have to do with the fact that she said no beforehand? Here's, my, here's the new problem. You're not saying... Uh, you're not willing to have this conversation. I am. I don't think I'm you are. Very You're willing. Okay, then you need to no, stop moral. I'm so you need to, fucking willing. Then you need to stop moralizing. You, your it's moral. Mor it's your moral stance has, has been made clear. You think that it is my obligation, and I will repeat it back to you one more time, and then we have to move on. 
Okay. Because it was, we're going to go in a loop forever, and we have to just agree that you're not willing to have this conversation uh, up that on the, about this specific topic that I want to have it about. Maybe because you think it's immoral to even have the conversation, which we is fine. We can have this conversation outside of your Tinder date if you want. Um, I don't want to. Well, oh, I'm not even asking about the Tinder date. I'm asking that. you a general okay. question, and the, and you're not answering that one either. I tried that. So last last time, you think if somebody sends you mixed messages and there's any confusion or doubt, it is the onus of the person receiving those messages to ask the other person for clarification and say, hey, we're not going any step further until you tell me verbally what it is you want and don't want. You think that is that is the job of usually the man or whoever is the sexual aggressor in the situation? Yes. Okay. So I, I understand that you think that. And in most cases, I agree with you. So let's set the moralizing aside. And now I want to go into the gray area, which is the focus of my mm -hmm. video. And my, my st it's not my stance on consent that I'm giving. It's not a, that, that's not my main stance on consent. My main stance on consent is the boring one of that I agree with you. However, there are gray areas and I'm interested. I know you mostly do. I'm interested with consent, with um, pedophilia, with all these other topics. I'm interested in the gray areas where where everything is a spectrum and where all sex acts have some element of coercion or rape and where all rapes have some element of consent and where it becomes murky and confusing and where people have experiences that they can't explain with the simple lens and they want something more complex and more nuanced so that they can um, help understand their own experiences. That's what I want. So if we set that aside, so there's, there's going to be some woman watching this who had the experience of a man pushing past her defenses and it being one of the most sexually gratifying, uh, hottest experiences of her life that she can't stop thinking about, but also feels horrible about it because she also felt violated or confused and kit and like, there's no, there's so, and so nothing will resonate with that person. Because if you say that's the same as a horrible parking lot, stranger rape, um, and you're, you've been traumatized and like you're, you should feel terrible about it. That doesn't quite resonate. And then if we say, oh no, but you just wanted it, that doesn't quite resonate. And I feel like that okay. certain people need to hear the message that like, it's a confusing mess. It's possible that part of you liked it, part of you didn't. And if you try to smother one of those two parts of you, you may never actually be able to like wrap your head around what even fucking happened to you. So I'll use myself as an example. Okay. In college, uh, I'm, I've, I've, I, uh, like you said last night on, in your stream, I don't like casual sex. I figured. Yeah. But um a man has needs. And in college I could not find I did I did do women. Yeah, well this story is about a young man named Max Carson. Okay. When I was in college there was a girl in one of my classes who I found pretty attractive. <clears throat> and um She was Korean. Uh, and I think that might have brought us together a bit because there were not many Asians in my school because I went to the University of Colorado. It was like 99% white or some shit. And um, we were, uh, I was, I like thought she was hot and then, and then she like asked me to be her partner for a group project. And I was like, yes. And then we became like kind of buddy, buddy. And then we started talking about like stress. And then she was like, oh, I love massages. I was like, okay, do you want to trade massages? And she was like, yes. And I was like, okay. And then we just kept talking about it. And then we we're like, oh, we should be naked. And then I was like, okay. And I was like, but I don't want to have sex. And she was like, oh yeah, of course. And I was like, great, somebody understands how great, because it's hard to find, in my experience, um, it's when I set restrictions like that, women tend to really not like it. 
Um, and like I've had, I told a story on my channel, a video called the time I almost got raped where a woman spent like, uh, like 15 minutes trying to violently force herself on me. Um, and it just became like more and more disturbing as it went on. And then she uh, threatened to mace me afterward. Um, that's definitely the worst experience I've had in terms of, uh, well, no, I've had my consent violated quite a few times, but that's probably the scariest. Um, but this, this, but I, so I'm kind of used to women not taking it super well. when I'm like, I want to be sexual with you. I, but I don't want to have intercourse because I assume a lot of men Intimate, don't, but not sex. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of men, I don't think say that. And so they're not used to that. And they, they assume that they know what I really want, even though I'm explicitly telling them what, that that's not true. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we're naked and we're like massaging each other. And then, um, I'm like, it, you, I'm like, you can give me a hand job, but I don't want to, I don't want anything else beyond like the massages we just traded. And she's like, um, she's like, so she's like, I, she's like, I can't give you a blow job. And I was like, no. Uh, and she was like, okay. And then she just leaned over and licked me. Anyway. And then she was like, sorry. Um, and I think I said, I no, you're not. Sorry. Or something yeah. like that. She was like, I won't do that again. And I was like, okay. And like, I kept a straight face. So like she violated my consent. I told her not to do it. And then she did it anyway. And yet it's a very cherished memory of mine. Where it has other stories, like uh, the girl who tried to force herself on me. I said no. And she violated my consent. And uh, it's a horror story. And I don't, I don't know if it's just luck. Or if the Korean girl just sensed that, like, she could get away with one lick, I'd be okay with it. I don't know. But it's, uh, I like that, I like that memory. And I'm, and I, and I, I'm glad she did it. And, and, and so when I look at, um, the straightforward consent training, to me, the consent training is about how should I act when I'm entering one of these situations and then, but this actual situations are so complicated and confusing and people are doing shit so fast and you can don't have I, time to process. Uh, can I share my consent stories then? Yeah. But I just, I just, my, my point is that, um, I just feel like maybe you understand better or you receive better when you hear personal anecdotes. Mm, the, the, fr I, I reject your framing that the problem is that I don't understand your terror of people thinking they know what you want, deciding it for you and forcing themselves on you. I do understand your terror of that. And I'm not trying to downplay it or say that it shouldn't exist or that it doesn't matter. I'm talking about something else. I don't think you are. I think we're talking about the same thing, but I think you acknowledge a joy there where I see danger and you want to paint them as different scenarios, but they're the same. No, you I'm saying, I'm, just saying fortunate. I'm saying I see both. I'm saying in every sexual encounter, there is joy and danger. And the safer it is. I don't think there's both. I think that there is. I know. That's fine. You don't have to agree with me. But I, so, and all this is to preface my question to you. Do you think that sometimes people say no while secretly hoping you do it anyway? Um, yeah, I think that that happens. Okay. I think that's that my, that's all that I wanted happens to. And, but, but I think those people. I don't want to moralize about to it. Learn I want. I to don't want to. I don't that. want to hear you moralize about it. I want to set the morality aside. We agreed. I, we have to stop because it's it's just virtue signaling now. You're just going over it's and over. It's not this. virtue signaling. It it's fucking a obviously warning. is. You're saying the same thing over and over again. I don't want to talk about no, that. I'm not if saying you, the same thing. If you thing are over not, if you are not willing are, to have the conversation free from morality, not about how things should be, but about how things are. 
then we can't talk about it because that is what my consent videos and consent talks are about. It's about how things actually are, not the idealized version of how they should be and not how they are with a quick explanation of how they should be. I okay, don't want to talk. I don't want to talk about how they should be. I want to talk about how they are. Talking, then let me meet you with my anecdotes, okay? Because I feel like my first time losing my virginity, if that was my only sexual like encounter, then I am probably on par with you. Like, oh, well, yeah, you can't always like know, but sometimes like the guy can tell and then like it works out and then it's like kind of magical anyway. I was 16, drunk. I had played strip beer pong. I was down to my panties and bras and brought like a couple times that night. Um, cute upperclassmen. I, listen, I woke up really shocked, really happy. I bagged a cute one and I lost my virginity. Woo. It all was like, I don't know, pretty great. Um, hurt a little bit. I barely remember it. I was definitely drunk, definitely couldn't consent. But overall, it resulted in maybe me meeting somebody that I genuinely was attracted to that went on to be a casual hookup for like the rest of my my days in high school. From there, because that situation didn't end terrible for me, I was kind of reserved for, yeah, you know what? Sometimes like you can tell what I want. Sometimes another person can tell. You know, sometimes if I'm not just like talking through it, like it doesn't, nobody needs to say words. That's what I became. I understood that there was gray and it's not sexy to talk about it and stuff like that. I got that from my first fucking encounter. And what that taught me was almost to never fucking speak up. Because I just thought that that's how it happened. I thought that that's what's easier. I thought that's what's sexy, that people don't want you to stop and tell them anything until it ended up where I'm in a relationship in my early 20s with a guy who then decided when the fuck I actually wanted to be choked out or not. It took a long fucking time after just like being convinced that consent is not sexy and that consent is not something you want to talk out and clear out. And it, it took me a lot fucking longer than it should have to just feel like the person that I am having sex with and that the person that I'm with should understand what I'm enjoying and what I'm not enjoying. Okay. I, yes. I agree that the person should understand what you're enjoying. What I'm talking but the about. Way talk about it no no you're you're you're, 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 miscon you're misconstruing not, you're misconstruing so part of it i don't think i am what i'm talking about as being sexy is somebody correctly guessing what you want not deciding you what you not, understand that let, there's a risk so you understand they could guess incorrectly yes absolutely there is a risk and so you are signaling to a lot of people to take that gamble because that's the sexiest okay route. i don't think you're willing to talk about the gray area you're only willing to talk about the morality and responsibility of how to talk about this in the most responsible way right like you're not actually willing to have this conversation what is what is the version of this what is the version of disagreeing with you on this conversation that is okay for for you that isn't like morally loaded. You're not disagreeing within the conversation. You're not willing to have the conversation. You're not disagreeing. I am all the way willing to. There's two versions. There's you shouldn't talk about the gray areas because people might get the wrong idea where you're saying I get what you're saying, but your stupid audience might not understand what you're saying. And they're going to take the wrong thing away from this and go rape people. That's one version. You're just yeah. saying you you're just saying you shouldn't we shouldn't be talking about this. That's what I hear you that's saying. Not, the second that's version not what I'm saying. The second, I'm saying that the you second are version the, the second in the wrong direction. The second I'm not putting I, any fucking weight. I'm not talking about how are. things should be. When you say something is sexier, you're putting weight in that direction. Okay? No. I'm that is, all the I way don't agree. That is not me telling you. This. Just because yes, something's sexy doesn't mean you should do it. I'm not giving you, you advice. 
This when is not advice. When talking about sex and you tell somebody what's the sexier thing to do, you think that that's not advice? Correct. The, fr the framework of the conversation is, Don't what is the safest thing to do? What is the most legal, most ethical thing to do? That is not the same as the most sexy thing to do. That's why do I don't. Understand that's why that I being don't like and feeling safe is so fucking sexy. Do you know what's not sexy is feeling like you have to tense up because you do not know if this person's going to respect your boundaries. That is I, not sexy. I, I understand. I don't know if you've I guess ever I tried to have an orgasm when you tense up your entire fucking body. It's it's a very very tiny, small, little itty bitty fucking orgasm. Okay, that's what <laughs> I'm telling you. There's a big fucking difference. <laughs> I'm, I promise you, sex is just, like, I'm not just saying this from... Um, Yelling to at me like, about your personal experience thing. is not going to convince me that I, I'm that I agree with you. I'm going to tell you, okay? Tensing up your body because you feel like at any moment this could go wrong because this person hasn't talked to me about anything. They don't know exactly what I like. I understand. They don't know the I understand. To enter my I vagina. understand what you're saying. We're you going do to go not in, understand. I do. We're going to go in circles until we can agree what conversation we're having. Okay, what conversation are we having, Mr. Girl? Finally. You can choose, but here's what I'm available to talk about and the ways I am willing to talk about them. One, is it irresponsible to talk about the gray areas without moralizing? Do, do you think I have an obligation to give, to give advice every time I talk about consent? Does it need, is it like, a, is it like cigarettes? Does it need a warning label? Every time I bring it up, do I need to say, and of course, uh, if you're just starting no. out having sex, blah, blah, blah. Okay. No. Then two, I'm willing to talk about how sex actually is. Um, if we set aside talking about how it should be. Because that's what my video is about. The fact is. People technically rape each other all the time. And often it's fine. Other times it's even desirable. Other times it's not fine. Other times it's horrible. Other times it's traumatic. And it is not so easy using the consent culture norms and rules and laws to sort out which is which. It is much more complicated. And you can say, oh, you just want to blur the lines because you're a pedo. You just want to blur the lines because you're a rapist. You just want to re rejigger the definition of rape so that you're not a rapist, but other people are. And I, I, I don't, don't think, think that's that. what I'm doing. And I know you don't think that either. I don't think that's what you're doing. I don't think so either. But people keep fucking telling me that and it pisses me off. So I want to talk about all the times where you would, by all instance, by, by, by all evidence, something should be called rape or we think it would be rape. And yet, all parties involved enjoyed it a lot. And then I want to talk about times where things aren't rape. Consent was gotten. All the right questions were asked. And yet, there is some element, unspoken or unknown element of coercion, that made it feel disgusting and violating for all parties involved, or for one party involved. All of the edge cases where... Um, uh, like when I'm talking with book smarts, and I'm saying like, well, a lot of, you know, a lot of people can be attracted to 12 year olds sometimes and he's like no 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 there's normies and then there's you it's the same shit i do, i think there's i think it's i think it's a spectrum <laughs> i think there's way more edge cases than people want there to be particularly with a topic where there's they feel that anytime they bring it up they have to be moralizing and giving prescriptive advice so i want to have an advice free prescription free immoral conversation about the dark confusing complexities of sexual interactions i want to talk about um uh people being sexually abused but then but then enjoying it at the same time and how that is such a confusing guilt inducing awful thing to then throw those people into a world where you're not supposed to feel that way you're not supposed to think that you're not supposed to fantasize about your rape. You're not supposed to fantasize about rape at all. And yet people do. Or you're not supposed to feel... If somebody checked off all the boxes, they, he asked me and I said yes. Or for men, men who feel violated, men who feel pressured, even though technically they weren't. 
or they or it was not explicit pressure, and then men who feel violated afterward. There's no room for all of those experiences that I think are are not even not even edge cases. I think they're universal. I think we've all had experiences of like, wow, well that didn't really line up with what I was told it was going to be like. And suddenly the lines between rape and not rape are blurred and confusing. And maybe some things, maybe that Korean girl licking my penis, maybe, uh, uh, like, it, it, it was rape, technically, but I also, I'm, gl I'm glad she raped me. So then, like, does it make sense to call it rape? It's confusing. It's hard to define. That's what I want to talk about. Or I want to talk about, like, whether or not it's okay to talk like that or about that. I think it's okay to talk about that. Okay. Um, I feel like when you tell the story about the girl who licked her penis. Yeah. That story makes sense. I Thank feel you. like when you use a story like the Tinder one, you use a much. She was also. I Asian. feel like you think that the Tinder one met your standards. And I, I don't, I don't think it did. I think that was a dangerous story. A story that I think you took the wrong way. I don't want to fucking moralize about this anymore. If you cannot stop, I oh have to God. I have I'm to revoke not... my consent okay. to, to discuss this with you. This is your last warning. I don't think, if you continue to talk about that. what is right, if you continue to say what is right and wrong, or whether I, I took the right or wrong... I understand. Okay. Go on. I don't, I don't know what to say. I feel like I think that you think you want to have this conversation, but I don't think you actually want to. It seems like, um, hmm? Fuck you. I already told you, you can't. Eric made the rules very clear to me. <laughs> yeah. Shaylin made the rules clear to me. I like her a lot. Her art's very, very, very nice. She likes you too. Oh, I'm glad. I get very nervous. Shaylin's scary. You don't want to go on her bad side. I don't. No. Um. Consent is complicated. Yeah. I think that consent culture is changing. Okay. I am more inclined and am very excited and feeling super adventurous about the shift in consent in which we encourage and just really lean into how sexy it can be to ask, to talk, Ugh. to weed Whoa. out all of the fucking Whoa. details Whoa. so that my ass doesn't have to take a fucking weed gummy to loosen the hell up to enjoy what should be <laughs> like a fucking 20 gummy. minute long orgasm okay that's what consent can do for you yeah that's I... what i like okay that's the conversation i think it should turn meta enough of the does she doesn't she kind of shit okay let that die with the fraternities yeah I think that this is too scary for you and that you don't want to go into the murky depths of this topic without a... Uh, it is not too scary for without me. Without a flotation Listen. device. Without a flotation device? Yeah, I think you want your inner tube. No, this isn't scary to me. I The only thing I'm worried about I think you're scared shitless. is triggering you. Are I you don't want to trigger you. Why? <laughs> Because you're going to want to just end the conversation and then you'll just say I was scared or something. I don't know. I'm not going to You think I'm going to vosh you? I'm not going to vosh you. Yeah. I, I just, think, I, I think, I think, I think we've hit a. Gonna vosh me. No, I'm not going to vosh you. I just think we have hit a dead end with this topic. I don't think that you are willing to have the conversation in the way I want to. And you know what, Cherry? I don't want to force you. Well, I'm I don't want really to force you to force you. Even though you're saying yes, I don't want to force you. 
Even though you're saying no, I want to keep going. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you have any specific <laughs> questions for me, I will answer them. But I, at, at this point going forward, and, uh, with regards to the consent topic, I am going to become a limp dead fish. It's okay. I understand. We'll, <laughs> we'll get there slowly one day. Okay. So do you want to move on to a new topic? Yes. There's some what other the shit fuck that is you... wrong with makeup to you? Why are you trying to, like, get rid of eyeliner for the entire world? I think it's misogynistic. You think I hate, makeup I hate is sexism. misogynistic? Yeah. <laughs> Why do you feel makeup is misogynistic? Because it's just uh, telling women they should paint their faces to try to perpetually look three years younger than they are, as if, like, it, that matters. So, so they can look more fertile. So they can try to look 13 for as long as they can. So they 15, can look 13 for as long. Fifth, maybe do you 15. think that do you think wearing heavy makeup makes you look younger? I think it is a often misguided attempt to look younger, yeah. Okay, cuz at the same time you would have to argue that children who wear makeup to look older are going Well, that's to a reverse thing where you're trying to, you're wearing makeup to make it look like you're older because older people wear makeup to look younger. I think you can put on makeup in such a way that makes you look older. And I th think that is what children do. You don't see like a 15 year old just putting on like, well, I don't know what the fuck children. I don't fucking care what children do. I think the overall goal of makeup is to make women look younger and thus more attractive to men. To make them look more attractive for men? Yeah. What about lesbians who wear makeup? Lipstick lesbians. They have a special name. Uh, I don't... yeah, then they're, then they're probably okay. trying to look attractive for women. I mean, I think the standards are set by men. I agree with destiny on this, but they, I agree. Yes. The lipstick lesbians are wearing makeup. So they, I don't fucking know. They probably want to look attractive to men too. Okay. What about married women who wear makeup? Oh, married women never want to look attractive to other men. <laughs> <laughs> Monogamous married women. It's not about. It's not. It's not because you're. I'm not saying when you put on makeup, you're actually going to go fuck somebody else. But I think the overall goal is, it's the. It is a. You're following a social norm of attractiveness, and that norm for women, in current, American society, is to try to look, younger. Is there something wrong with a woman wanting to appear younger? Yeah, because you're not younger. You're you. And it's a lie. It's a lie. I don't think it's good wrong? for you. I don't you think, think it's, it's good, good for you to okay. walk through your day having people be like, oh, you're pretty. You're pretty. Oh, you look great. You look nice. Oh, you're good looking. And then you're like, yeah, well, it's not really me. And then you get home and then you shower and okay. then you're like, I don't want anybody to see me until I get ready. I think it's fucked up. Do you think that women look that drastically different when they take off their makeup? Some That's of like them the do. Very there are a few niche situations, hey, and I'm sorry, most of them are Korean. Um, I don't know if you there's like um, a whole thread of what Koreans do with like their makeup. It's like oh, yeah. they it's go, magic. They go pretty far. The, can, the, the extent of the difference <laughs> doesn't is not relevant to whatever extent you look different with makeup on, which is why you're wearing it. I think it is psychologically bad for you to have people why? complimenting you on something because it's not real. It's not actually your face. It's you, a it's a drawing of a that... face that you put on top of your head. You're like fucking leather so face wearing someone else's at, skin. You're upset at the enhancements. It, it bothers you. If a woman wears like, let's say they just put on blush that day. That's too much. Uh, you're asking, when you say it's too much, you mean too much for me to be happy about? Like if Shaylin puts on blush, am yeah. I like... I hate this. Yes. Okay. And because you said you don't like I hate it because every they appear fleck, younger. Every fleck of you, makeup on a woman's feel, face, it makes me feel with feel about loath, men, loathing and rage. How do you feel about men who shave their beards? Because there's a lot of men, once they shave their beard, they look like a little child. I think that's fine. You think that's fine? Yes. Why because, is that okay? Well, you think it's natural to shave your beard off? It's not about Razors natural. Razors are not it's, natural. It's not about how natural it is. It's about how honest it is. When you shave your beard, people know you shaved your beard. Makeup is usually designed to you be... You think someone's confused that I was born with this black line above my eye? 
Mm, no, but a, a, a harsh black line like that, I think, is more honest than like cover or foundation or blush. Like if like if a goth girl wears makeup, that doesn't bother me at all because it's like we we I know that you're exaggerating. You know your lips are not actually black. That doesn't. That's different. That's so just that's a different thing. So you believe that there are people in the wild wearing makeup that look like they're not wearing makeup. I think that's and the those goal. people need to be stopped. I don't think they need to be stopped. I just think it's bad for you. Mm -hmm. The same way I think it's bad for them. Okay. The same way I think lying about your age or your height on your Tinder profile is bad for you. So it's like a whole be happy with who you are and encourage the world to just w accept them as they are. Accept yeah. yourself as you are kind of thing. I think it's I think it is adds to the culture of shaming women for their bodies and not accepting who they are. Yeah. Do you think all bodies are valid? I don't know what that means. There's kind of like a movement for people to like glorify obesity. Like no, I someone don't think who being, is. I don't think being obese is a good thing. Okay. So you don't go too far. Um, no, I don't think you should I would, be obese. I would agree. It's a different thing, though. It's a different kind of self destruction. Mm hmm. I think makeup is self-destructive and also destructive to other women when you wear it. I, I think it's sexist. Okay, so so here's my problem. Yeah. Is it that you find people are just naturally beautiful as they're born? Or do you just think that the ones who are born ugly should just deal with it? I think that we need an adjustment of our beauty standards as our beauty standards are always changing. What was attractive 50 years ago, we could still recognize as attractive, but it's different from what's seen as attractive now. So I think that it, the best thing for women and for men and for everybody is to get rid of makeup and we'll, and we're, we're going we're gonna to keep fucking each other. Like, I don't think there's any risk of that not happening. So I think we can just stop wearing makeup and then we'll all get used to it. I think that would be better for everybody. Women wouldn't have to. I, I think just the act of having to spend 30, 45 minutes or an hour altering your face before you can present yourself to the world, I think that is inherently not good for people. Why do you think that? Because I think it it's telling yourself a message that you are not good enough until you have obfuscated or transformed your face somehow. What about people who will spend eight hours a day in a single day to dye their hair like wonderful brilliant colors just to rock it for about like six months is that also not healthy no i think that is healthy like, how do you because that's that, that the person's not doing that out of self-hatred usually I, th I think it no, depends on why, why you're doing does it makeup always lead to self-hatred i think it comes from self-hatred i don't think it does well okay. i think you get rewarded for wearing makeup. I think that's very possible that most people find um, the the more attractive that they appear. Absolutely. And there are certain things that you can do to be more attractive. Yeah, you get rewarded for tighter. playing ball, but I think the game you're playing is inherently immoral. What's immoral about wanting to appear attractive or more attractive? I think attractive? it's wrong to tell women that they need to be dolled up. And what about women who want to be dolled up and telling them that they need to be dolled down? Do I'm not you telling think them they need to be. You... I just think it's wrong. I think it's wrong to play along with it. Yes, but okay. You're you're deciding that it's wrong to do it. Yes. And you want everyone to not do it. What about the women who don't care what you think? Then they're going they like to do it. They're going to probably do it anyway. I'm not saying it should be illegal. I just don't like it. I think, I think that I think that the like Lady Gaga the Lady Gagas of the, the world judgment. the Lady Gagas of the world who are going to make themselves look super out there and crazy and like almost like drag queens uh, artistic mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that like that's I don't care about that. I I do think act it's to like some extent. Expression. I do think Lady Gaga is a weird case because I do think that she is afraid she looks too plain. But I also think she feels self-conscious about wearing makeup. So she's like, I'll just make myself look completely different. I do think she's kind of sidestepping it. But yeah, mm -hmm. I don't. I generally, I don't think it's a good thing.
I think that when you acknowledge that you feel like men put the the standard or um, influenced women to look this way, yeah, and then turn around and then I don't know, be the person who decides that they should no longer look this way. The man. I, like, at what point do we just let women decide for themselves instead of? Letting I'm not them saying know. they she like, can't just I, I, I don't I reject no, the idea are, that like if I say if I say abortion should be illegal then I'm not letting women decide for themselves that's just what I fucking think I don't think that you should do it I'm, I'm you can do whatever you want I don't think you should I'm not gonna silence myself because I'm not a woman yeah but I'm just gonna disagree with you that's fine that's your absolute, okay. you absolutely have a right to disagree with me. I'm not saying that you have to agree with me, but I don't, I don't, I don't like being told like, well, unless you're a whatever black trans woman, you can't speak on certain <laughs> issues. Like, no, no, I think, I think, I think you can absolutely speak on it. I okay. just think that you are, um, I feel like you've done the thing where you acknowledge like men are the one who wanted this. And then you're doing the thing where it's like, well, now I don't want this. Yeah, like, I, I wasn't part of the men who wanted this. I'm now I'm deciding I want all yes. women to wear no makeup. Yes. And you're just you're just still doing the thing where you choose what's like the most beautiful. Yes. OK. And I just I don't. I think their I first choice agree. was wrong. And, I, and I'm, I I'm, and as, as the for... representative of men, I'm amending our choice. I changed my mind. Um, I just, I, for me personally, the most based take is for men and women to do what they want with their appearance. If you think that you've got a big nose, get a nose job. Who cares? Oh. If you, wow. if you love your cool big it nose, with the anti-Semitic remarks. No. You had to call I'm, out my Jew nose. You know, black people have big noses too, right? Uh, you don't get to just own that. My nose is bigger that. than yours. Isn't it? If you don't like your strong jawline, then yeah, get like a chin job or something. Or if you love your strong jawline and society tells you, oh, women shouldn't have strong jawlines, fuck them. Rock that strong, strong jawline. Like, do you. Yeah, I, think I don't feel that, that way. I don't feel put out there. I, I think it should be illegal. You do whatever you want, but like I don't. I, yeah, I don't think you should wear mm -hmm. makeup, and I don't think you should be obese. I think they're. Some, I think they're a bit self-destructive. I don't. I, I, I'm not advocating hating people who do these things. Mm -hmm. I understand why, and I have empathy for it. I just don't. And I'm not an advocate. Okay. I'm a bit of an advocate for just women to do whatever they want. And if that means... Well, I'm an advocate for that, too. I want to change what they want. I want them to <laughs> want what I want them to you do. Want and to then I want them, them to do what it. they want. Yeah. Yeah. I tell Shaylin this all the yeah, time. Like, I, want, I want her to be an independent woman who does whatever she wants. But I also want that to coincide with whatever I want. With her what to do. you want. Yeah. yeah. It's brave. Yeah. Okay, I feel like there were more topics that you did that we had to iron. No, out. no, I really don't think there were. I didn't watch your gender takes. Um, we briefly discussed transracialism on the yeah. Chaos Cast. Uh, are you not watching my gender takes because you don't want to take a firm stance on that? No, it's mostly because I've already been dragged by. Um, a trans creator on the platform and yeah. i just would like to like have a couple more months like away from that community before that's what, that's what i, I meant. talk about like, i feel like you don't want to put you don't want to take a stance publicly about gender at this time oh i've taken a public stance well you don't want to I reiterate support... i mean i'll reiterate I'm what'd just you get dragged not... for i got dragged for not respecting neo pronouns mm-hmm <laughs> Somebody told me that their pro I forget what the pronoun was. Um Well that's the thing about neo pronouns. Yeah, but they called me a transphobe and I don't accept that because I respect people <laughs> who 
trans I respect trans women, trans men. I respect non-binary. Um, I will if it's she, her, he, him, they, them. I'm on board with all of that. I don't know what it means to be um, a Z, and I'm definitely not calling <laughs> a human being it. <coughs> so with with those that that's where I'm. I'm pretty far away. Um, do you, uh, you a big free speech guy? A big free speech? Yeah. It depends. Um. Do you think you should get suspended from Twitch for misgendering people? I've heard that you can. Um, I don't think you should be able to get suspended. <clears throat> you, and you're against, do you think you shouldn't misgender people? No, you shouldn't misgender people. But you should miss neogender people. I don't know that neo pronouns are a gender. Please just answer the question. I think that's a question. different thing. No, it, that is literally part of the question. Please is answer if the question. I acknowledge, do you think it's okay it, to me? That's not a gender okay? to me. It's not a gender okay? to me. Do you think it's okay it's to? It's not a gender to me. That's fine. Do you think it's okay to miss neo pronoun use people? Um, I think it's fair to call them by their username or to refer to them as Do you think it's okay them? to uh, fail to use someone's preferred neo pronouns? Yes, I think that's okay. And now, is the difference between these two that you are you don't see as much solidity in the underlying belief or there are not enough of them? Um, I don't see... Like if there I don't more, understand it. If, yeah. What if what if you didn't understand it, but uh, there were like millions of them? Millions. Do you think at a certain oh, point you'd would... be like, "Well, I don't understand oh, this," start, but I'm I don't forcing myself into ignorance at that point. If there are millions of people who felt who like, um, there's millions were of going Muslims. By these pronouns, I'm. There's millions of Christians. Do you believe? And, I, and do you believe? In I that acknowledge shit? that those are religions. I don't know them, but I know. I but you don't. You don't do you think Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? No. There's a million people who think that you should say that you do. I, I and I acknowledge that there's a million Christians then. Like yeah, I uh, you can them so you can Christian. acknowledge that there's a million neo pronoun users. My question is at what point do you join them? Oh no, I would I would not become one of them. By I'm using I, 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 I believe I'm gonna s I disagree. I think that when you when you gender somebody the way they want you to rather than the way you want to, you are joining them. No, to no, some no. extent. I don't think you understand what joining neo like my pronouns would still be she her. Yeah, I know. Mean? I'm if defining I'm, I'm defining joining people, as you agreeing. You when you start using the neo pronouns, you are agreeing, you're validating them. Wait, are you you're pro neo pronouns cuz maybe you have to go watch your gender takes. No. I thought you were I think this is all further... horseshit. <laughs> I'm not even pro regular pronouns. Well, we would disagree with that. I know. For this reason, I don't. I think that uh, I don't think you should tell people how to talk. Mm. I certainly don't think you should enforce it with bans. I agree with not telling people how to talk, but I would disagree with. Um, with misgendering somebody who has told you that they've transitioned. Well, fuck that. I don't think, I think, mis I think, I think I don't misgender people to their face uh, because I am polite and I don't misgender people on Twitch because it's against TOS. But I, I want to use, uh, so like, I want to just use whatever word comes to mind. Do you want to use for me? She. So you're saying um, based on someone's level of passing is what you want to go by? 
And yes. you don't want to be. Exactly. Exactly. You okay. convince me. The onus is on you to make me use what word you want me to use. Not you fuck. Not because if you tell me to gender you a certain way, you're only doing that because you know that actually I want to use a different word when I look at you. And you and I now you're telling me I have to reflect back something at you that I don't even see. Just to make you feel better. Hold and Listen, I understand that's I fine. In polite society, we do that sometimes, but I don't think it should be fucking enforced by TOS. Could you, could you let me address my chat just for one second? Because I don't want this person to think that I didn't see. Uh, Cherry, if you don't know his stance on the topic, please disengage. Disengage from my fucking chat. You think I can't <laughs> just find out what he thinks in real time and fucking <clears throat> it, just meet him there? You think I need... Eight hours of his fucking content to just have a conversation with him. <laughs> Best eight hours. Fuck all the way off. Okay. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. So if if someone you want to be able to call someone what you see them as. Yeah. What if? Okay. And if it's wrong and they correct you, what then? Are you okay with the correction, or you're like, mm, uh, it's, no, but it's not wrong. Not I'm you. like, you're wrong. Okay, so you challenge them. I don't no, I don't do this in my personal life. I'm like I'm I'm like okay. a more polite person, but I'm but I don't think it's right. <laughs> like I I I'm striking a balance. Okay, it would be like um if you meet somebody at like a dinner party and and they their their partner says, "Oh, he's a very talented poet." And he's like, "And you've read his stuff and it's shit." You're you're not gonna be like, well, you're no fucking poet. You just think you are, bitch. Like you're not gonna say that. You're gonna be like, oh, th- th- well, that's great. And so that's how I am in person with with pronouns. But I'm I'm being nice. Gotcha. You're, I don't I don't you're... actually believe in it. I'm just being nice the way I'd be nice Listen, to anybody. But as soon as it starts coming isn't... around, mm-hmm. as soon as it's like, hey, if you don't say that my boyfriend is a good poet, you're gonna get kicked off Twitch. Then I'm like, well, okay, bitch. I don't think so. Now I disagree. Okay. So this is where I got into the kerfuffle with the neo pronouns thing, because it's very easy to just play the pander game, but I feel like mm. that's having even less respect for the person. So that's why I just let them know. Exactly. I don't know what neo pronouns are, so I don't respect them. Exactly. Cause I'm, because I'm lying. I don't respect them. I'm not going to refer to you as them, but listen, I don't feel that way for trans people. And I do. I'm, 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 Somewhere between being polite, sort of believing it. Uh, if the more you pass, the more it does feel kind of natural to say she or he, especially if I haven't met you before the transition or heard of you. And then on some level, I'm just going along with it. But the more it becomes like, no, you have to actually believe this and show that you believe it. The more I'm like, this is wrong. I don't like that. Because I don't believe it. I think that you're just pressuring me to reflect back at you something you wish was true. And that we all do that to some degree, and that's okay. But as soon as you start trying to force me, as soon as you go further and further, and you're like, no, trans women are literally biologically women. And if you don't say that sex is a spectrum, you're transphobic. I'm like, well, stop. You're going too fucking far. Just stop. You want me to be polite to you? I'll be polite to you. If you're going to say you have some kind of like psychological fragility around this and you're going to feel be feel physical distress and emotional pain and, and you're going to freak out if I use the wrong words or wrong name for you, then fine. But don't start trying to justify that by telling me it's the literal most true thing possible and that science has proven it. Like, no, you just want me to say it and I'll say it because you want me to. Uh, in certain situations, but fucking, you're, it's going too far. It's like, just stop. And I, and I want to say that in the most loving, empathetic way possible of like, I want to hold my boundaries. I want you to stop. It doesn't mean I hate you. I'm not transphobic. I'm not afraid of you. I just don't like the way the ideology is like spreading and people are too scared to stand up to it. You have control issues. I feel the way about general trans ideology that you feel about neo pronouns i know you do and and so that means i have control issues 
I think you have control issues. How so? It seems like you need to be the authority on what someone else is or what they experience. And even when there are hundreds of thousands of them, your confidence isn't shaken. I barely received pushback from like five people on Neo Pronouns. And I am more inclined to do, to like read up and try to learn more about Neo Pronouns than I am to lean into never trying to understand it. Did you read up about or it? Or to, there's so many things I'm trying to read right now. So no, actually before you got on to well, fucking I, I look Twitch, forward to seeing what I was like you think halfway of it. through a socialism and capitalism debate. Um, I, I look but, forward to seeing what you think of it. I think you'll find that it's a bunch of horseshit. My, I think it's more of an aesthetic than it is a gender. So that's why I pushed back on well, you, you don't with know, that earlier. You don't know anything about it. So I've read about it. So you once know, you read I'm about learning. it, then we can talk about it. Once you have some basis for your authority. Mm, okay. Uh, 100,000 people telling me I'm wrong about something does not make me <laughs> agree with them. That's true. I'm not a, I, I, I guess that maybe I'm a control freak. I think of it as that I'm not a conformist. No, just control issues. Did I say freak? Well, I, I didn't mean freak. I don't think, I don't think conforming, uh, is a good thing. It, I don't think, I don't think if somebody, a, a bunch of people tell control, you something, you should agree with and it. I think, I think most things have to be your idea first and foremost. Otherwise, I, it seems like you're skeptical. I don't think it's my idea that gender is socially constructed and not real. I, I was taught that. And then I was taught, I was taught that by liberals. I was taught by liberals. Gender is like our expectations of liberals. Uh, uh, I did when I was 14. I was taught gender is a, a socially constructed expectations for how men and women should act. And then the same liberals turned around and said, actually, um, there are some people who are transgender, and that means that they don't feel these expectations fit them or apply to them. And then I was told, actually, these transgender people are not people who want to shirk societal expectations. A trans woman is literally a woman. They actually are the opposite gender in their brains. And then the same people told me, actually, it's not that they are the same gender in their brains. We've New research has come out. Um, male and female are actually on a spectrum. So biological sex is a spectrum, and no actual firm lines can be drawn. They're all drawn by society. And if you, if you have any, like feelings about that or any I, I have firm beliefs about where anybody should be based on their biology then you're transphobic and you're a bigot and not only are those are those ideas all contradictory they're also super clearly a obsessive like ocd progression of trans people not being satisfied by each definition until they literally in every conceivable way are defined as the sex that they are literally not so it's not it was not my idea i bought the first idea i agree with it i was taught it and i believe it i was indoctrinated to believe it i just i just at a certain point i was like well i don't believe this other stuff same thing with feminism i was i, I was taught that men and women are more alike than different basically they're the same and that most of the differences we see in their behavior is socialized or can be socialized. And that the fairest thing to do is to treat them the same. And then I was told, uh, yeah, but if a woman wants to choose to wear makeup, then that's fine. And we shouldn't have any bad feelings about it. And I'm like, no, I'm stuck in the fucking 70s. I don't agree with that. Fuck that. If men don't wear women, if men don't wear makeup, then I don't think women should either. I don't think it's fair. If men can go topless on the beach, I think women should be able to go topless on the beach. Would you feel better if I took my makeup off right now? No. But you're welcome to. Okay. The fuck? I've got a career to think about. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, I stream sometimes without makeup. It doesn't 
really faze me. I just prefer to have like an inch of black above my eyes. Um, listen, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I understand there are people like you who are very skeptical um, about another person telling you that they feel like they are a different gender. Oh, no, I transition. believe that you feel you're a different gender. I just don't believe in any of the constructs that I'm required to believe in in order to accept that that's true. I believe that Christians feel the warmth and love of God, but I don't believe in God. I believe that's their experience. But do you understand that gender is something that like society participates in and then someone's like faith to their God is personal and like no, their religion own? is a societal I participation too. I think, I think the whole trans thing I think is a religion. I think it's just a new religion that people are trying to prove is, is scientifically true. That's what I think. No, I wouldn't agree. I know. Why do you think it's a religion? Because it's a bunch of made up shit that people grasp at straws to try to force other people to believe. And the reason people believe it is because they're being forced to, not because they actually are convinced. Most people, like you're saying, you're like, well, I don't really want to talk about this or research it. I don't want to know. I don't want to talk about neo pronouns. No, I that's do how religion. That's how religion spread. A of mob this. of people tell you that you have to say you believe something, and if you don't say you believe it, then you get in trouble. That's how religion is spread. No, it's just, the, it, the part it, it, it that sucks exactly is the when they way. don't let you ask. When they don't let you ask questions, when they don't let you learn about it first, when they give you no fucking there's time nothing to learn. Before they it's, want you it is, to just it's fucking submit made to it. up. There's nothing to learn. No, there's always something to learn with people. You can learn about there's yes, the same way you can learn. learn about a religion, but you're not actually learning something. You're just learning what they think, but it's not a real thing. It's not literally it's not I... scientifically like ver verifiable. It's just a, a, a it's a belief system that I don't want to okay. adopt. I don't I don't think and, I and I and I will not adopt. I'm very, um, I'm confused. Okay. I'm just going to say, I think I'm confused by comparing, um, transgender and religion because I don't consider them to be one in the same religion is like faith, faith based. And a lot of, I don't, I don't compare them and I'm not really sure how they're compared. Um, well, you understand I the comparison it, I'm making, that it's people telling you you have to believe the thing they made up or they're going to kill you. Well, they're not going to kill me. They're just going to Well, some version of that. They're either going to punish you. I, but I feel like they were born into a world that's already telling them to believe this I or we're going to ostracize you. I don't who was born into you. what world. I'm saying the only comparison I'm making is that a religion replicates itself and spreads in the exact same manner through fear and pressure and occasionally people are drawn okay, so, to it because it answers questions about themselves but i'm saying the way so, a religion would spread to me the only way i'm ever okay. going to say jesus christ is my lord and savior is if you put a gun to my head then i might say it so let's say we're born in a world where everyone believes in god right we yeah. know that us on the outside here today um, or at least between you and I, I most people do. I, no I, I assume eighty or ninety percent of the world's religious. What do you like What do you do, and what do you do when you're born into a world where everyone is forcing you to believe in God? Start a YouTube not, channel and say you're fucking seem wrong. It doesn't like religion. It's just the way of life. It's mm. not. It's not an outside religion. You are raised learning this. Everyone knows this. Yes. It's just a way of life. Yeah. What do you do there? If I was religious, I would proselytize my religion. I would do what religious people do. I'm sure. Oh, you're saying if I don't believe okay, in God, no, but I'm surrounded by people who do? You are born into a world everyone does. It's, that's what it's I, That's where I was you. born. I was born in this little super liberal town where everybody believes okay, all this and shit. What did and you I, do? I started a newsletter saying you guys are full of shit. Who's with me? Okay. Do you not feel like trans people can view themselves as, as having been born in this religious sort of world where everyone's decided on their yes. genders at birth absolutely and that they are just themselves they are the truth trying tellers. to and break that we're out all of that we're all i'm deluded and they're telling the truth and i just I don't understand yeah. yet yes 
don't you have some desire to understand or a desire to I did until like, I interviewed yeah I did and I interviewed a bunch of them I read a book I read a bunch of articles and I talked to them and I I I talked about it for hours I mean like it's not eight hours of content it's mm -hmm. like 15 hours of conversations with trans people and I'll, I looked I'll into every it. single possible explanation that they have and it was all like didn't convince me it made me think it's a religion a religion plus like a psychological condition what do you know about research uh research about what the efficacy just of research transitioning? in general no, no just research in general do you do you think that there can be an inherent bias Yes. In the person uh, especially with research. the internet, you can find any you can find articles to say whatever you want, for sure. Now, the 15 hours of interviews that you did, have you had anyone else go over it? Or is it just like your your video stuff on on your channel? Your gender narrative? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah, everybody's going over it. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I haven't yet, so I, Everybody I but you. try not to watch other people's content. Listen, do you see me? I'm working really hard on my stream, know, like, I every know. night. I know. Okay? I see you buckling down. Jeez. Um, yeah, I've only got so many hours in a day, all right? I feel like you can absolutely go through it yourself and come to that sort of conclusion. And I have. And I, and I think you've entered a space that is very willing to peer review you and i would just hope that you're open to hearing some of those I, peer uh, reviews i absolutely am okay. I, I eagerly await your review if you do look at it and if anybody uh any uh, tr any it, trans but... creators with with uh, over a hundred yeah. concurrent viewers want to discuss this on stream, <laughs> I'd be happy to talk to them. But at a certain point, it's I... like I, my view, my audience has seen me talk mm -hmm. about this ad nauseum, and so yeah. like yes, I'm yeah. open to being challenged, but I also don't want to just talk about it over and over unless I'm I'm spreading and growing myself like the virus, the mind virus that I am. So I, I like, yeah, like understand. I'll debate destiny about trans shit. And I, I mean, I did, I don't, I guess I wouldn't do it again, but like, yeah, if, uh, Hassan, if, if you see this and you want to debate about trans issues, <laughs> let me know and we'll do it. But, and then uh, if other people oh have God. like compelling responses, like get that guy. I would love to, but if other, other people have compelling responses and they want to, uh, critique it, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely watch it and, and I'll respond if I feel compelled to. I'm open to being taken I, to task by the trans community. The last comment I got I in the video that, was um, last, or no, I, got, I guess I got some more this morning, but I got a comment from a trans person last night saying, uh, I'm trans and I really appreciate this video. I don't agree with you, but I really appreciate your open-minded approach and that you are not transphobic at all and that uh, you're just here to say your view and, you know, good job. And that, and that seems to be the general response from trans people that I've gotten, which is, which is like, I mean, you saw me talking to Zonia too. Yeah. I feel like the main, the main response is like, I see where you got to where you are. I don't agree with you or I do agree with you and I don't care. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm I have a little bias. So of all your content, I dove into the BLM narrative first. Sure. <laughs> um, but I know after watching that, the, like, I didn't take you for a racist at all. Yeah, kind of so I think that you'll have, I hope you'll have a issue. similar experience with the trans one if you choose to watch it. I hope so, too. Um, I will say for the BLM one, though, you you do the thing, the centrist fucking thing. I can't wait for you to have, like, an actual opinion and move away from the middle, okay? I'm um, a centrist. Yeah, but you, you're going to have to grow out of that eventually. No. No, mm -hmm. I hate the polarization that happens and I hate the hate that comes with it. I want to bring people together. Do you? I, I don't know if, if I want to get into this. Um, do you believe the Holocaust actually happened? Yes, I do. Why would I ask you that? I'm just trying to guess what you're going to ask. Do you believe that someone who is a friend of everybody can be is actually a friend of anybody's? 
No, but I think friendship is different. I don't want to make political alliances based on groupings or factions. I think the current political factions are broken and insane. So I don't agree with the way people have divided mm -hmm. themselves. I don't agree with the issues or stances. I have I but have stances. You... I just okay, don't. Okay, so friendship that... aside. Friendship aside. Do my you stances feel like are when not, you advocate uh, my... for it's everybody that anyone friend... is actually Fucking... being helped? It's a fake friendship if it's based on shit you don't actually believe. So I, I'm not, I don't I don't agree with any group set of ideas. If there was a group of people who happened to agree with me, if the left had all the same beliefs that I do, then I would be like, wow, I guess I am a leftist. <laughs> How comfortable for me. But that's not the case. And I don't think that's the case for leftists. They're internally inconsistent ideas on both sides. And people are choosing their factions over their own ideologies. And they're lying. That's what I think. I think if you're not a centrist, you're a liar. I don't think that's true. I, know. I think that... I think a lot of politics are extreme on the internet. I think it's very possible that you see someone who is a Democrat on Twitter, but really they are like a fucking uh, socialist communist waiting for like Motherfucker, the I grew up a start. Democrat. And I grew up in a Democrat family with Democrat friends in a Democrat town. I, I, I mean, I've never, I voted Democrat in every election I've I'm ever voted I'm not saying in. you're not a Democrat. I'm saying I'm the, I'm, on the internet. It well, all my opinions of lot... Democrats are not based on the internet. They're Listen, based on I don't being even know. a fucking Democrat. I haven't or... even finished my statement yet. I don't know. I don't know how you're disagreeing with me yet, Mr. Gall. I'll stop. Okay. <laughs> um, I feel like you choosing to be a centrist because everything feels so divisive is like is a little bit of a cop out because the divisiveness that happens in politics online specifically is so fucking extreme and removed from the real world that like labeling yourself as a centrist and just you almost take no position but to insult both sides or empathize with both sides and just do the fucking both sides like all right motherfucker what do you want to position on what do you want to position on i'll give you concise positions um you want stances i'll give you stances give me the stances that you know you have already i don't uh, want to if you don't know just just tell me the ones that you know that you have i think trans people have access to hormones and surgery way easier than they should and possibly shouldn't have any at all i think that uh as long as black people are being over-policed and over-sentenced, I think that we should reduce general sentencing guidelines for everybody and err on the side of under-policing people rather than over-policing them. I don't think we should defund the police. I don't think that Antifa or BLM supporters should riot, and I don't think their rioting should be tolerated. And by tolerated, I mean... Not that we should throw them in jail for 20 years, but I think that we should be doing more to stop it and condemn it. And I think that if you don't condemn it, then you're spineless. How do you stop it and condemn it without punishment? More cops in areas that are going to spend more money on it, I guess. But what are the cops going to do if they can't punish them? Disperse them. How fucking if they won't go? They'll go. There's fucking more smoke bombs or whatever the fuck They'll, you do to But they know routes. that there's no consequences to their actions. How do they go? The consequence is that you can't breathe. You're getting tear gassed. So you have to go. Uh, fine. Arrest so them. Arrest them. Punishment. Arrest them and throw them in. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying punish <laughs> okay. them, but I'm saying we don't need lengthy sentences. I'm doing whatever the January 6th people gotcha. did. Throw them. Arrest them. Throw them in jail for a couple months. January 6th. Um, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. And January 6ers, uh, they were lied to and deluded by Trump into thinking they should storm the Capitol. I don't think we can hold them responsible as terrorists and also hold him, Trump responsible as a terrorist organizer. I think what, that... What about the uh, ones who just went in there and shot all over the Capitol and wiped down the walls? Whatever. If uh, if you open the doors to the Capitol, if somebody else breaks down the door of the Capitol, there are people who will go in and shit on the wall who would not have gone in anyway. So I... <laughs> 
a fuck that's what's going to fucking happen so do do we need to take every person who if they saw an open door to the capitol would walk in and shit on the wall do we need to arrest all of them and put them in jail like i don't i don't think so the opportunity presented itself and they took advantage of it and uh, while i do think on some level it is an insurrection that needs to be taken very seriously to me that needs to be addressed on a social fabric level not on a harshly punishing these individuals level I thought something terrible was going to happen that day, and I'm not in the FBI, I so they too. also just fuck, they dropped the ball and fucked up. And uh, Trump uh, oh, clearly you know, encouraged it, and clearly did not discourage it. I, I I mostly blame Trump on undercutting people's faith in democracy because democracy re- requires faith in democracy, and he's he, he likes to eat away at it. Any other issues? I should. Uh, I think that abortion uh we basically need to vote or by jurisdiction on at what point in a pregnancy abortion should be illegal and i think we have to accept that no one's going to be happy whatever the law is no one's going to be I happy agree. unless it is fully legal up till birth or fully illegal after conception and both of which would be insane laws so i think we just have to let go of the idea that you're going to be comfortable with it and just find something you can live with. Mm. Okay. These are all very um, heavy topics. Um, yeah. Well, you said I don't have I stances. Do want... so no, no, I appreciated that. These okay. are stances I didn't um, have clarification on. So I do okay. appreciate that. Okay. Uh, another one that I need. Vegan. I think the Are most. You vegan? I'm not vegan, but I think it is the most moral thing to do. I think I care about the feelings of animals and the welfare of animals, and I care about the environment. However, that is counterbalanced by the morality of not eating stuff that makes me stronger and that I like to eat. So I do think there's some morality in self care and some hypocrisy in not acknowledging that we're just like smart apes that enslave and eat everything in front of us. Because we are, and, and that is sort of selfish, but that's also what feeds us and nourishes us. And that's like, I care about humans more than mm-hmm. I care about any animal. So I'm a bit torn on that. I think ideally technology will allow us to escape the dilemma and eat stuff that tastes good and feels good, but doesn't involve hurting other sentient beings. But right now I, okay, it's the same thing with abortion. It's like, it's not, uh, it is, it is ultimately, I think, morally superior. Well, I don't know because I always run into it. It's morally superior to not to, to be a vegan, but then I also want to push for the idea that taking care of yourself is actually a moral thing to do. I had an argument with one of my clients once uh, my training clients about whether jerking off is morally correct. Cause I was like, I was like, you're taking care of yourself. Mm. Like it's, it's actually a good deed to yeah. jerk off. And he like, couldn't wrap his head or he kept being like no it's like selfish and i was like yeah but that's why it's 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 a good deed for the world to jerk off sometimes it's medically necessary um yeah like when i have really bad cramps which sometimes they're just fucking awful yeah um like uh masturbation actually helps with that sure and then the equivalent would be like eating iron for anemia or something but i'm talking about self-pleasure being um like that it's moral to just eat a cow because you feel like it. Like on some level, I do believe that. So if you're talking about from a selfless, altruistic stance, veganism is obviously superior. But if you factor in your own health and your own carnal desires, mm. then I well, think it becomes more complicated. Well, I don't know if it's superior. I'll, I'll accept that you believe that. Um, I know vegans surely believe that. I haven't gotten into any vegan debates yet. I'm not really sure yeah. if you know what I do on Twitch. I'm not like a know-it-all or anything like that. I yeah. um, I watch a lot of debates and I go over a lot of debates and I try to learn as much as I can about these topics. Yeah. Um, I'm more of a... I don't know. I know a few things here and there, but I, I don't know these topics in and out. Vegan debates is like next on my list this year. I'll probably hit it in March. Okay. And my chat tells me that there's... Within vegan debate is like morally requiring people to eat bugs 
and whether or not you can fuck animals, which is like mind blowing to me. I didn't know all of this like was. Yeah, if you can, I, I understand. If you can eat an animal, why can't you fuck an animal? I, that always goes back to my emotions argument of like, well, because it's weird and people feel weird about it. That's the only reason why. And because we have other animals you can fuck called humans that are, you know, for your safety consent argument and verbal consent, it's probably safer to fuck a human than a sheep from an ethical standpoint and a True. medical standpoint. You probably I, so I think that argument is kind of stupid because it's like if you tell your friend I ate a sheep, they're like, oh, cool. How did it taste? And if you tell your friend I fucked a sheep, they're like, oh, are you, what? why are you doing okay and it's like a completely different response so some things do you feel weird about people fucking sheep yes or do you oh that does make you feel weird because i was yeah. told that you uh, like agreed with vosh about like the primal instinct of whatever horse cocks and shit yeah i like i i well i said to, told stardust that jerking animals off is hot that doesn't mean i think it's morally right just because I say something's hot doesn't mean I think it's moral. I'm not moralizing. She just said, like, she's well, talking about people whose job it is to, like, jerk off. Even if you take morality off the table, it's is not even right, is not even hot. Mr. Well, if you're Bell. talking about that, if there's people whose jobs it is to, to jerk off animals, and, you know, I find that kind of cool. But that doesn't mean I think it's right or that I, I've never done it. Yeah, I've never done it. Horses have really big penises. Yeah, I feel I love, like it would I love be um, with penises. But you work out, so that might be like enjoyable for you. It would be a workout. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would. I would. I would like to. That's on my bucket list. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think this is where I hang up. <laughs> okay, my cum bucket list. <laughs> okay. Um. Well. I, I'm going to draw the line here. I know. Uh, you said thanks. a lot of yikesy stuff, um, but I definitely draw the line at cum bucket list. I'm getting voshed now. You have to go. I understand. I, I do have to go. Um, I enjoyed this first fight. Me it, too. It might have been a fight. Yeah. Let's, uh, you know, let things percolate and then we'll mm -hmm. reconvene. I'm sure I'll see you on some panel soon at some point or something. Probably. Probably. Well, great. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, check out your streams. See if you, uh, you know, have anything else to add after the fact. Once you have done some more reflection, and uh, yeah. Anything else you want to say? <laughs> um yeah okay. one more thing yeah what did she just hang up on me oh my god she fucking hung up on me unfucking real unfucking real all right, she wants a war. She can have a fucking war. Jesus Christ. <sighs> Fuck you guys. All right. That got weird. Guys, this is getting weird. All right. Let's, uh, I got semi voshed. Yeah, that wasn't full, but it was not good. Not what I like. Not what I like to see. Oh, she's about to raid me. Horse cock lord, master, Mr. Girl, what's the post op? Uh, I feel like that horse jerking is her line in the sand, noted. Uh, I think that was a good conversation. Phil seems like it went well. 
um, definitely the uh, consent part felt like we got like locked and went on a couple of loops. Um, I find that when I need to find a different way to communicate this, I think sometimes I'm like, Hey, you're not willing to talk about this. Are you? And I think it, uh, it's not a really graceful way to say that. I think it makes people feel like I'm calling them pussies or something. I don't want to communicate that. So I need to find a way to just be like, I don't know. It's, I did the same thing with Vosh where I was like, are you not willing to answer this question? And people react really badly to that. Cause like they don't want to answer it, but they don't want to say they don't want to answer it. So then they just like freak out and get like really upset. Uh, yeah, so I got to find a way to just like, I don't know, maybe I should just be like, well, I refuse to talk about this. But then I hate because then people go around and say like, well, Mr. Girl won't talk about something if you fucking, uh, you know, um, challenge him on it. So I don't want to do that. Oh, thank you for the raid, Jerry. I appreciate it. Welcome, guys. Uh, wait, did she actually raid me? Are you tricking me? I did thank her, but I don't even know what happened. Just agree to disagree can work very well. Okay, thanks, Stardust. Yeah. Stardust, what did you think of this? How much of this did you watch? Okay, well, welcome. Welcome. Uh, I, don't, I didn't watch Cherry's chat, so I don't know what you guys are feeling about how this went. I, I'm curious to see. Um... Raid but left immediately. Yeah. As a gender abolitionist, would you say that plain genderism is like a religion as well? Yes, I do. I agree with that. I think definitely if you feel like you're born in the right body, like you're a man and you're supposed to be a man, you're supposed to do manly stuff because you were meant to be a man. I, I think that is also a religion and probably might actually come from literal religion. So, yeah, I think that I just don't agree that you're in your body. I think you are your body. I think that's my main contention with that. How are you so confident and comfortable during awkward silence? I can't stand that. I guess practice. I guess. Wait, I, lost, I asked Stardust a question. I feel like, did she answer? There's too many people chatting. I don't think she did. Well, I'll talk with her later. I'll have a word with her later about what she thinks of all this. Would you say religion is whole? Uh, would you say religion is wholesale bad, or are you using that as a scapegoat? I'm just using it as a comparison of like I think we've agreed that pushing religion onto people is bad. So I don't think it's, I don't I don't think it's bad. I think it's not for me, and I don't want it pushed on me. I think that's what kind of the comparison I'm trying to make. Oh, you said it was fun. Okay, okay. I'm glad you thought it was fun, Stardust. Uh, am I a prison abolitionist? Yeah, I don't think we should just get rid of it, but I think we need to find a better solution. I don't think we should torture people. What's my favorite desert? I'm going to assume you mean dessert. My favorite desert is uh, probably Death Valley in California. My favorite dessert is um, maybe Tres Leches or Tiramisu. I like a big, wet, sloppy cake, pretty much. Um, okay, I'm going to read these donations. If I, <laughs> if I had a name tag that said Jim, and I told you my name is Mike, <laughs> what would you call me? <laughs> um... I don't know. I'd probably avoid saying your name, but if I had to, I think I would call you Jim. I think I would go with the name tag, but I don't know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird question. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We have four donations uh we have three donations but two of them are from the same person 
So Rivi gave me one dollar and said, "If you became a become a cult leader, can I be one of your forty wives? I'll pour the Kool Aid." Uh, I'm not going to become a cult leader. Uh, Yui gave me one dollar and said, "Mr. Girl, I have a fitness question for you. I've never really worked out before, and I'm nervous about going to the gym. I don't want to feel judged. What can I do to focus on fitness? Nuts in your mouth." And then Rivi, uh, for another dollar, said, Now that I've heard your gender take, I rescind my previous don't know. If you become a cult leader, can I become one of your 40, 40 husbands? Uh, I'm not going to become a cult leader. And I thank you guys for the money. Uh, but to answer the fitness question, if any of you <laughs> were interested, if, if that had been a genuine question, what I would have said would be... Uh, um, the everybody starts at the bottom of the ladder of just like knowing people in the gym. It does feel like you're walking into a jail like the first time guys stare at you. But I, I found that working out at home by myself, I found I, it's much harder to get motivated to like push myself harder. I feel like having a bunch of judgmental, like burly men and women looking at you um, can make you do shit that will get you injured. So don't let it pressure you too hard. But it can also make you feel like I don't know, I feel like the discomfort is like part of it. And then after you've been there for a few months, they, they start being nice to you. But it, it is a weird thing. Um, I think sex equals gender equals religion. I don't agree with that. I think that there's like a biological reality of mating and creating babies. And you say one per one side of the species is male one is female and if you could they can make a baby together you got a male and a female i think that's uh socially observed and constructed by scientists who are people but it's it's i think it's more real than um making shit up uh you said at the end self selfishness is a virtue have you explored thinkers like Anne? Ayn Rand and Rational Egoism. I haven't. Um, somebody recommended Ayn Rand to me, so I'll check it out. I would like to, to read some of her stuff. Uh, how much of you knows you're saying something controversial and leans into that for attention, or is it just to throw people off? I think it's more like I'm trying to... Like, sometimes it's I'm, I, I know it will be funny to phrase things in a certain way. But I think usually I'm trying to say the thing that I think is missing or is going to be like the more thought provoking or even emotionally provocative like um, thing that I think. But but I'm saying it because because I believe it and I think it's true and I'm aware that it could be provocative or that it likely will be. Uh, but I think it's more that I'm just forcing myself to say it anyway or allowing myself to say it anyway or steering it in that direction more than um i'm not i'm not trying to throw people off and i'm not just saying it for attention i don't i don't want to be like a shock jock who's just coming up with whatever them like uh i said like five pretty controversial things in the course of this conversation that was like over two hours long um so i i don't i don't want to just say stuff to make people freak out um do you say you like horsecock because it is socially unacceptable or do you say it because you actually like horsecock and by admitting it you demonstrate how little you care about social norms uh the second one i actually i actually like horses cocks uh and i'm saying it because it's not that i don't care about social norms it's that i'm trying to like challenge them i don't think i don't think we shouldn't have social norms i just think if we're having frank um honest vulnerable weird conversations on twitch it doesn't make sense to be like but i would never say a horse is attractive like uh i think we should i think we should yeah so i just don't agree with the, the social norms uh am i black no uh uh
Do you get upset that a lot of your fan base is from Destiny? No. Uh, no, not at all. Destiny um, launched my career, and I am very grateful. I, don't, I, have, I have no 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 qualms about the fact that uh, the influx of new fans, uh, especially on Twitch, like dwarves, uh, uh, or dwarfs old fans, like no. And I think on my channel, I think that there's a bit more of a mix, and it's a little more evened out. But no, not at all. I, I, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Uh, the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. Do I think Robert Ford was a coward? Mm, no, I think that I think the title's definitely referencing like um, the perception of him as a coward. It's a good movie. You guys should watch it. I don't. Uh, no, I feel like it's just it's a really complicated movie with complicated characters. Um, is and he's very sad. He's a very sad character, but I wouldn't call him a coward. Killstream is tomorrow. I screwed up. I announced it as today, but it's actually tomorrow. And I'm gonna. Oh yeah. I'm going to stream the Killstream debate on YouTube because I don't want to get banned from Twitch and Twitch is more strict. So it is... I keep saying the wrong times, so let me... It's on my it's on my schedule on Twitch. It is tomorrow at 10 Eastern. And I'm going to stream it on my Mr. Girl Returns YouTube channel, which is not my main channel. It's the second channel. Uh, Destiny did a kill stream debate just today. It's normally fine. I know, but I feel like I'm already kind of like. I don't think I'm breaking TOS, but I think I'm going to be getting reported for stuff I'm saying, and I don't. I just don't want to risk it. Um, and also, I I think this guy is specifically banned from Twitch, which I don't know. I I'm getting a lot of different messages about whether it's okay or not, so I'd rather just not risk it. Spam the channel URL and chat now. This is, the, that's the URL. What conversations have you not had yet that you'd like to get into if you can find the right people to talk with? I do want to talk to Dr. K about uh, kind of like self-help or not self-help, but like helping people and how you can do that on the internet and the ethics of like taking money for it, especially now I have like my advice show of like, is it exploitative? Uh, and just like the lines between like, it's just, it's just a confusing, like messy topic and then mental health in general, I want to talk about with him. So I would like to talk to Dr. K or, or somebody else who wants to talk about that stuff. I think that'd be cool. Favorite horror movie. Uh, invasion of the body snatchers. The 1978 one. I think it's 1978 with uh, Donald Sutherland. Probably. Maybe Alien. Uh, Hereditary. Big fan. Uh, Terminator. I think the first Terminator is a horror movie. Big fan. Um... I voted for Joe Biden. Oh, wait, I got more donations. Ready? Scrambly said, I think she was just too defensive to have a conversation with. Um, uh, if you're talking about the consent part, I think that it was very emotional for her. Emotional for me too. And I'm emotional about talking about it. I think we're both defensive and pretty pissed off. I think there's probably a way I could have done it that would have made her feel less defensive. But, uh, yeah, we we hit a wall there. Uh, and thank you. Mark Schmitty gave me $5. Repeat after me, or don't. I don't control you. If you want me to read your donation, type exclamation point donate in the chat box to get the donation link. I read donations at the end of every steam at the end of every steam the fuck is that supposed to mean 
Anyways, thanks. Uh, Ad Bullock gave me $5 and said, All of the talk about horse dicks reminds me of the Sugandis, Sugand, Sugandis tribe. Oh, the Sugandis. What's Sugandis? I've never heard of that. Please fill me in, you fucks. Xanatos Esquire gave me $5 and said, It seems the major hang-up around this conversation is being super explicit and repetitive about the conversation not being about advice but about describing reality. The nervousness people have comes with the perception that this is advice to others. Yes, I think that that was good that I, I zeroed in on that. I think I need to make that more clear of like, you, you have to stop moralizing because it, it just, once we've agreed to stop moralizing, it becomes virtue signaling. And then it becomes like every five seconds, it's like, but racism is bad, guys. And like, I don't want to do that. And so I understand. That's why I was asking Cherry, like if she feels... Like, it's just immoral to have the conversation the way I want to have it. Then, like, we can talk about that in, like, a kind of meta way. But we can't we can't really get into the weeds of it and then keep saying, like, but we shouldn't even be doing this. Ah, I'm starting to catch on. Slowly but surely. I'm sexually attracted to my younger sister. She's now 20. Is this as fucked up as everyone, including my wife, thinks it is? First of all, congratulations on telling your wife that you're attracted to your younger sister. I feel like that's a marriage that that, that anybody would want. That you, If you could share that shit with your wife, good job. Uh, is it fucked up? Um, I think it's unusual for people who grew up together to be sexually attracted to each other like that. Um, or at least to not be also grossed out enough by the idea of it to kind of counteract it. Um, I don't, I don't know. What do you mean by fucked up? It's probably unusual, uh, especially to be aware of it, but I don't know. Maybe it's not that weird. Uh, wait, what's your question? Is this as fucked up as everyone thinks it is? No, probably not. Because I think people are going to say that, uh, it's like immoral or like you should shouldn't feel that way and like you just do so it's fucked up if you um use your power over her to get sexual gratification out of your relationship in some like creepy way or try to create situations that are gratifying to you where she's not aware that's happening or like there's a lot of things you could do that would be fucked up but the feelings no i don't think so it's not ideal that's, that's got to be uncomfortable Uh, which mental disorder does infrared have? Symptoms are paranoia, insomnia, and more. I'm not going to diagnose people. I don't, I, I'm not able to diagnose people. I have no idea. And I don't, I've never watched infrared. I shouldn't have even answered that question. Awful lot of stepsister porn on Pornhub. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think the stepsister porn is really just sister porn. And the stepmother porn is really just mother porn. It's just to give you a little, make you feel a little uh, relaxed about how your weird, uh, you know, your, your kinks. And to make you feel, I guess it's, like, if you're, if it's normal to be sexually attracted to your mom or your dad or your sister or your brother or whatever. But the grossness factor that is supposed to like inhibit that isn't there. I feel like porn that stepsister porn is like, this is a safe place for you to fantasize about your sister, but we just remove all the gross parts of it. Did I read the bit donations? Oh shit. Wait, no. How do I do that? Wait, last time I did this, it kicked me off. I'm going to try it. Dashboard. Uh, somebody tell me how to read the bit donations because I fucking forgot. People who watch incest porn usually don't want to fuck their family. I know, but it's like, it's not, it's not about actually wanting to do this shit that's in the porn you watch. It's about wanting to, uh, f explore that sexual component of the the feelings it's not it's not i'm not i don't i don't want to do the shit i see in the porn i watch i just well sometimes but i 
uh, it's like a way to just take that sliver of sexuality and expand it and then just like fantasize about it and then, you know, close the tab. Stream manager activity feed. Activity feed. Filters. Uh, bits. Bits. Um, uh, okay, I have to filter out the follows. Wait, are there messages to read? Or are there just cheers? What do you want me to read? Uh, interest in doing a hot tub stream? Yeah, I was thinking about that. Here are the bit donations. By the way, do you care that your address is kind of leaked in your two videos? Uh, well, let's talk about... Why don't you DM me on Twitter if you want to talk about security concerns. I don't think this is the uh, forum to do that. Here are the bit donations. By the way, oh, that's the same thing I just read. Ever meditate? Uh, sometimes. I probably should more. I journal. Um, that helps me more than meditating, I think. Um, okay. Well, I don't, <laughs> I think that's it. Am I, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm done unless there's something I'm supposed to read. I don't see any messages with the bits though. I feel like there aren't any. Is that right? Why do you no longer write satire? I just don't feel, I think I'll make a satirical video at some point. I mean like the I'm a pedophile video is, but it's not, uh, it just doesn't speak to me right now. I feel like it's not what the world needs I guess I feel like satire is good for um, challenging of like dominant social or dominant political idea or social idea and right now I most of my contents about trying to like bring people from different groups together rather than challenging a specific group all right We're going to raid either Rhizome or Stardust. Okay. We always raid Stardust. We'll raid Stardust next time. I'm going to raid Rhizome today. Oh, how to behave? Browdy as fuck. Get, fucking shake the walls. Tear the shit down. You're welcome for the stream. Goodbye, horses. Thank you for coming.